That's fine. <laughs> We're Gucci. <laughs> We're back. It's time. Ugh. All right, you don't have to slam this, but yeah, you do. <laughs> A lot of stuff at the bottom. It's fine. Okay. It's because we waited too long. <laughs> yeah. Too long to drink it. <laughs> <sighs> oh, all right. Yeah. Happy Monday. Happy Monday. We made it. Nailed it. We made it through a whole weekend. Yeah. Even got here on time ish. And a whole week we made it through. Yeah. Okay. So uh, I played two week. I played two tournaments this weekend. You yeah. played one. Yep. We worked out this week. Yep. I watched some coverage. I got a bag. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Can you guess which one he just got? Which, oh. which I desperately <laughs> needed, obviously. Um, yeah. Just a little retail therapy, you know. Yeah. And uh, in, in my idea of like trying to move towards getting a sponsorship, I didn't want to carry like a manufacturer bag. Right. So the bag that I carry right now, um, when I'm actually going to do a tournament, is my Prodiscus bag. Mm-hmm. because I have a voodoo bag, um, and it's great, and I love it, but the padding on the straps has kind of yeah. dissipated to the point that, like, if I use it for a whole day at a tournament, it's digging into You're my shoulders. You're basically using rope. Kind of. Yeah. Like one of those little like, <laughs> nylon sacks. But no, yeah. like, I, the thing is, I love the bag, so I'm going to probably yeah. figure out somebody that I can get, like, some padding put into the to the straps, because, like, the size of the bag, the layout of the bag, I really like it. Yeah. Um, and then I have that discraft bag, it's a little bit too small, mm-hmm. and then it's made of like really intense nylon. Did you even get this one? I got it for states, okay. so I finished uh, for Am. I think I finished like 14th or something. Mm-hmm. Um, no, I finished ninth okay. in, in Am at states, and so I got that bag because yeah. like it was a bunch of discs that I didn't really want, so. <laughs> So I got. You didn't want to just get like a stack of buzzes, or I, th- I think I got a bunch of wasps. I think honestly, like I got that bag and then like five wasps or something. Okay. But estates, as I learned that that specific year, which was not last year but the year before, that just because it's a giant am field, mm-hmm. and just because you're paying like good money to play it, doesn't mean that there's actual prize money involved. Yeah. Which I was shocked. Because <laughs> I was like, "There's what nothing. was your player pack? Well, you you get the thing, the the buzz and the mini buzz. Okay, and that was all you got. Yeah. Okay. You get. The, I mean, like, I'm trying to think now. You caught me off guard. I'm I know. Like, I was it. just curious too because I was talking to Dave about it. Um, I mean, not that specifically, but um, people were saying stuff about X, Y, and Z for playing a next gen event or national amateur disc golf tour event. Right. Um that their player packs are like giant and he has to explain that that it's like look these payouts are kind of smaller just because a lot of that money gets goes it's, to the player pack like right. you're already winning x y and z your money's worth just by playing the event or whatever right, like, i was just curious like amnats is trophy only yeah but you get like a bunch of dope ass shit yeah and they're like yeah yeah cool makes sense yes um but yeah, states. I don't think you get. I mean, I don't know. Yeah, you get like a. Cu- yeah, you do get some stuff. You get like a few discs. Like that's where I got the pipeline from. Okay. And that, you know what I mean? Like you get like a few like things or whatever it is. Um, but it's usually like yeah, like a DGA disc and like something else. And then they spend a bunch of money on the d- the buzzes and the hats and stuff that you get when you. I guess that's part of your player pack. Mm-hmm. But you, it doesn't guarantee that you're gonna go. So they kind of give out a bunch of births and all that stuff. And a bunch of people get births and get the birth package, but don't actually go to states. Yeah. So I think like a bunch of the money goes towards that. Okay. So, yeah, there's like 96 people in your field or something. Yeah. Or whatever it is. Yeah. I finished like top 10 and I was like, oh, here we go, dude. Yeah. <laughs> Dude's <laughs> about get to a bunch fat. of stuff. And yeah. I, it cost me $70 to play and I won $144 worth of stuff. Yeah. And I, was I like, remember something similar playing with Jared there. Yeah. Also thinking like, Dude, I'm about to come out of here with like a hundred buzzes or something. Yeah. It's like I got four or yeah. whatever. Dude, this is gonna be crazy. I'm gonna yeah. have a discraft mountain bike. Yeah. Like this is gonna be not, like Yeah. Like, like, try- dude, I just hit it big at David Buster. Yeah, that's what like, I'm saying. I'm gonna be able to go to the air and get whatever the fuck I want. No, I get like <laughs> Dude. So I wonder I mean, I don't know if series do that or not, but that would be dope, like a Dave and Buster situation. Yeah. Where like it's am. But you can just like load up your points. Yeah. 
You know what I mean? And then maybe they have like a website where you can go and like choose the shit that you want. Yeah. So if you wanted like, maybe. so if, yeah, no, like seriously, I think that'd be awesome. Yeah. So like, I know like there's like a Jaybird series. There's a wow series. There's like all these series throughout the summer. Mm-hmm. Um, I'm just spitballing here. Yeah. But yeah, it'd be super <laughs> cool if you could save up your points or whatever it is throughout the year mm. and then like get the fucking Discraft grip bag or, you know what I mean? Like get a chain star. Okay. You know what I mean? Or chain star pro, you know what I mean? Like legit instead of just accumulating like 85 discs throughout the year mm-hmm. instead get like a fucking super legit, like 400 and something dollar basket. Yeah. Yeah. Maybe we're onto something with that. Maybe I'll talk to Dave later. That'd be super cool. And see. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so anyways, whatever. I just <laughs> learned I learned that like finishing top ten didn't equate to, you know, the ladies again. Oh, crazy. Yeah, I also thought there'd just be like, you know, a bus. You also were having this thought in am. Yeah. <laughs> so yeah. It turns out no. Um but anyway, so I, I got that bag and I was like super pumped because there was only two of them. Mm-hmm. So I grabbed it and it was like I think like eighty nine dollars or yeah. seventy nine dollars like or something. And I was like, Yeah, yeah. I love bags. Like yeah. if there's a bag, fuck yeah. I'm in. <laughs> um Unless so you I, have well. <laughs> so I got it and I was like super pumped. And I really like it. It's just it's perfect for what it is, but for an actual tournament, I can't put that much stuff in it. Yeah. So and then it it is kinda heavy because it's like really like that bag will last me through the apocalypse. Yeah. Um they all will. But <laughs> But uh, yeah, it it just uh, it, it's just a little bit a little bit lacking in, in what I need. So, anyways, I uh, I had seen a guy's uh, Carlton bag, and I was like, well, if one of those comes up um, on Facebook or whatever, and is in like really good shape, uh, I'll, I'll get it because yeah. I was like, it looks super cool. Um, made in the USA, which is yeah. important to me. That's why I own so many Revolution bags. <laughs> yeah. Um, same like I like I, I like the Voodoo bags and stuff. Yeah. Um, and it's so, made by a guy who designs really or does a really good job at designing bags like yeah. overall. He's like yeah. an epic dude. Like yes. if it was me making bags, yeah. I would be him. Yeah. Right? Like <laughs> I have I have the Red Wing bag. Um shout out to No Excuses Disc Golf. They don't make bags anymore. Yeah. But absolutely Still. the total Rolls yeah. Royce or if you're younger, I guess the Bugatti of fucking disc golf bags. Yeah, um, Dude, Macbeth used to rock one too. Yeah, 2010. Yes. It was yeah. a great photo. Old yep. Glory, pin pinwheel on the front. Shout yep. out. Um, but I had those. I had that bag made. Um, another guy had a sweet one made, which is behind that one. And then he didn't want it anymore. And I always loved it when I saw it online. And then that guy was selling it, and I was like, "Fuck yeah, dude! Yeah. I'll buy it." So I bought it from him. Um, and I like those same thing because they're like handmade. You know, and like super high quality, but yes. for a production bag, those pound bags are legit. Yeah, one the like the fit of the bag when I'm like when we when we went out for our rain round, which we'll get into, which is why yes. I no longer have the Peter Weber uh, <laughs> extended thread uh, Yeti. But um, dude, even with it loaded up and stuff, like on your back, it's it just disappears. It's so. It's it's so nice, um, and it does. It'll actually fit all of my cart discs in that bag. I don't have any pockets for drinks at that point because I'm using all the pockets. Oh, that for is discs. good. Yeah, it tastes nice, doesn't it? <laughs> it tastes nice. Um, <laughs> so yeah, you made a little mess. Oh, like you, yeah. You're gonna have to learn how to handle that uh. thing. I'm just going to smear onto the table. <laughs> so, yeah. So, I got that. And it was dope. All right. So, now let's yeah. let's let's get into the transfer of the Peter Weber. So. Yeah. So, we went last Friday. Yeah. You called me well, there, doing well, leagues or whatever. Yeah, there's Friday Stony Leagues. And yes. the weather looked horrible. Yes. Like so, you were telling me, let's go play. I was like, fuck because yeah. It's we gonna talked. Be. And we're like, dude, the next time there's a rain or rain happening, we're going to go play. Like. And that's what was going to happen that day. Bad. League was going back and forth. You were talking to the guys that were running the league if it's going to happen or not. Yep. And you're like, oh, I don't care. Like, we'll, we'll bet for it. Like, we'll bet the cup, whatever. Yep. And, uh, and use this time to play in the rain and figure it out. Like, you got your rain set. Yep. I've done, like, sweaty pet practice in the basement. So, like, kind of the same hand feel. So, I was feeling, like, okay with it. And ex- like legitimately excited to go play. Yep. <clears throat> so we get there, like or I show up, and like as I'm 
like pulling in you're like how far out are you like i'm about to be there you're like okay i'll hop in my car I'm like no, no i was already leaving <laughs> I whatever got, i got a little held up um so i get there people are already like kind of showing up or whatever and uh i don't know that league is canceled yet and then eventually i think it was well at it, it, like some point in time it was like leagues are canceled like it's not necessarily the rain it's like lightning is right. going to be like raining lightning basically right so predicted there was a ton of lightning um around like seven thirty, eight o'clock yeah so the league would not have been done by that point so yeah. the decision was made because of lightning that mm -hmm. they would call it because yeah. we've i've actually played that league in the rain yeah so they they canceled it um and then i was like well sweet then we'll just play and rock through and try to get through both courses yep. and play like for the cup get the like we talked about before play the the rain set up and go yeah and so like i played i got a new like i got new rain gear before i left for ledgestone or whatever so i was wearing that like in anticipation for everything that was going on um i had new rain pants yeah and i had the rain jacket on the bucket hat yes and then the umbrella all the gear I had, <laughs> yeah i, I brought too. <laughs> i brought the carlton out loaded up with the rain set yeah all my pro d extra out. towels like <laughs> everything <laughs> in I, in the freezer bags yep i think we teed off on blue yep at like 5 45 or something like that yep probably close yeah and it was not raining yet Yes. Like the ground was wet from like drizzle earlier in the day or whatever the hell. Um, yes. And it didn't seem like rain was going to happen. So like I came to you with the idea of like, what if we just did oh, no towels? Yeah. What if we did like no towels used? You can't, can't clean up your disc. Yeah. You just got to play with whatever the fuck your disc yeah, picks up. Because I thought that would help with kind of the situation of, well, if it doesn't rain or whatever, maybe it's like you're dealing with this adversity. And uh, that lasted for how long? Not even the front nine. Yeah, not the front nine. Yeah, because I know it was like grinding. You didn't, like you had a different expectation or whatever. Yeah, well, when it wasn't raining, then mm -hmm. like in my mind, it kind of hit the thing of like I'm just playing with discs I don't know. Yeah, and you're playing with your set that I do know that you do know. Yeah, and the Peter for Weber. So, yeah, for something right, for the Peter Weber. Yeah, so we we opted out of that, yes. which was totally fine, right? And makes sense. Um, and then. <laughs> I was still so so let's so I did well on hole one. You yeah. did not do well on hole one. Yeah. <laughs> you did well on hole two. I did not do well on hole two. Yeah. And then we got to three and just kinda like played through. Yeah. When and we got then, to three we were tied. Yep. Yeah. And then three we tied. Yep. Four we tied. Yeah. Five. No. Because that's when I really learned that even surge plus yeah. is not really a surge. Yeah. Yeah. And then I went deep <laughs> as fuck yeah um yeah and then when we got to six then we had decided like we don't have to wipe them off like after six is when it was like okay you don't have to yeah. wipe them off um and then i started like falling behind mm -hmm. there and then i was like in my mind well once it starts raining like mm -hmm. i feel like my setup is better and i'll be able to make up strokes yeah and i was like come on rain yeah there, i was even come on rain like we, we were talking shit to mother nature like it yeah. started like it it was a slow progression yeah and we got it's a weird feeling being out there like this is fucked up because it's not raining yeah yeah like, yeah what the fuck it's yeah. supposed to be pouring yeah What's so going we're on? like we're through the front nine and we're like i think the the idea is like jokingly well what if it doesn't <laughs> rain because like right. you got clouds and everything like it it looks like it's for sure gonna rain yep. the wind is like up and down you have like thunder rolling around and it's just like any day now like even you were like oh it's coming like <laughs> we idly were joking like it might just not rain yeah and then we like we would say that and then it was like come on like don't be a pussy <laughs> like whatever and then we get like more holes in and then more questionings happening more holes and then we finish the front or the first round yep no rain no rain not even like drizzles no nothing nothing yeah <laughs> immediately start on the second course Go to green. the green yep Yes. X nuke. I have I got two of them. Yeah. Flip and Bomb. They're <laughs> brothers. Bomb is a meat hook. Yeah. And Flip is well, you know, not a meat hook. So we get to I'm pissed at this point cuz I'm like there's no fucking rain. I'm playing against this guy who's a really good disc golfer and I'm just using discs I don't know. 
And I'm like, whatever. So we get yeah. the whole one on green, and I'm like, I'm fucking bombing this thing. So yeah. I take like <laughs> bomb, which I didn't throw at all the whole first round, and I was like, I'm gonna rip out this hyzer and do this. Yeah. And then I threw it out, and it just fucking like hooked into the into the shit, and I was like, damn it. And then I was like, all right, well we can make up some ground, and then rapidly, yeah, that just round, the first hole. <laughs> that round started falling apart for me too. And then I was just like, come on, rain. Yeah. Yeah, dude, I legitimately wanted it to rain so badly. Like, even before that, and and really, the most wet we got was just how moist we were in our rain gear. Yeah, like, we're just sweating. Yeah. Just just sweating, because I didn't, I didn't wear, like, a Gore-Tex jacket. Yeah. I specifically didn't. I just wore the, like, lightweight rain jacket that I have, which is like playing in a garbage bag. I mean, it's yeah. slightly better than that, but it's basically like I'm trying to cut weight from an MMA yeah. fight. You yeah. Know? Like, yeah, me too, for the most part, too. And I kept mine on the whole time yeah, I kept... just because it was – I want to be comfortable in playing in something like that. Like, if it's raining, I can at least have mobility and whatever. It was, like, super comfortable. It was just hot. Yeah, hot. <laughs> yeah, like, there was – every now and then, like, it would – kind of wave up and the heat that's all inside would come and hit me in the fucking face <laughs> yeah i took i took my jacket off to put it into the bag yeah one i wanted to see how the bag was with it with like you know putting as i was adding stuff to it yeah it was money um but yeah i took the jacket off and then it was wet yeah but on the inside and yeah. not on the outside and then like i realized like my entire t-shirt was wet yeah like the whole thing yeah and uh, i was like this is a different kind of practice than what we were going for <laughs> yeah so maybe we just get like wrestler like the, the weight cutting suits yeah you know and then put sweat suits on top of those and then just play in like sauna like conditions sure i'm down yeah. we'll have to get we'll have to get a couple of couple of challenges in yeah so we play out the two rounds um it was it was it was a thing we did it mm-hmm. and uh i got smoked it wasn't even close there was no rain just to recap, yeah. there was zero rain, <laughs> zero. and there were people after the round who were legitimately upset at the whole thing. Like we could have played. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. And I let like when we finished, and it's just like, dude, when when it was close to halfway through the second round, is like, we, like leaks could have happened. Yeah. But how are they supposed to know? Like the the yeah. weather says X, Y, and Z, and it's not just rain. It's lightning is the factor, not wet. Right. Yeah. And there and uh, you know when you're dealing with weather or anything like that, like. What are you going to do? I mean, there's yeah. nothing you can do. And in running yes. a league, I think you're damned if you do, you're damned if you don't. Yeah. Any of that Triple stuff. Triple edged sword. Yeah. You can't, <laughs> you can't predict the future yeah. and you do what you do. Yeah. So whatever we got done, um, I was glad that we did it. And I, I definitely felt like one, I felt like the rain set of discs that I got, which was dope because mm-hmm. you can get six discs delivered to your house for 50 bucks. If oh, you get yeah. rain, rain discs, <laughs> um, which was fucking made me feel like a millionaire. Yeah. Um, but I felt good because I felt like the set was usable. Um, there's like one hole in it, which I'll, I'll figure out or I'll just beat in one of those fucking things and yeah. then it'll be perfect. Um, and it was cool. I was happy to like get to use them. I was happy to get to do some throws, get some more practice in with the metronome drive system, whatever we, whatever we're going to call it, yeah. uh, rhythm based throwing. And, uh, and it was good. And then we had, I had a tournament, we had a tournament Saturday morning Yeah, at then, Indy, at Indy, which I haven't played all year. Um, and I was joking around with Zach when I was like starting to get frustrated. I was like, maybe this is just the way that I'll practice and warm up for tournaments in the future is just go out and throw around with a bunch of discs that I don't know at all. Mm-hmm. So that way when the tournament comes, I'll be like, fuck yeah, th- at least these discs are going to do what yeah, I want. That was know? like the first, when we were done, <laughs> you were like, I'm just so excited to use my normal set. <laughs> yeah. I was like, I can't wait to throw discs. That I, I won't be stuck in this limbo of like, yeah. I guess I'll throw this. Like I'm, this should work. <laughs> yeah. I know how they're going to fly. It'll be amazing. Yeah. Yeah. Not on the course that I'm playing the tournament on, like just some <laughs> random course with like, maybe I just borrow someone else's bag like the night before a tournament and just go throw a course. Yeah. That's not the tournament course. Then just show up in the morning and just be like, oh, thank God. Yeah. Or you could just limit your set too. Like just go out with X amount of discs instead or, of whatever. Or figure out some kind of roulette system. Yeah. Right. Where I just roll dice and it equates to a bin yeah. and a disc yeah. number. Yeah. Bin number one yeah. through yeah. 11. Bin I don't num- know. 27. Bin, How bin, many are here? Bin number nine, disc 13. You're like, got it. Yeah. You know, and you just take like 10 discs. Dude, we could do that. Yeah. That'd, that'd be, be a, cool. That'd be a fucking hilarious thing. Yeah. You just end up with a bunch of bin 14s and you just got like all these high speed drivers. <laughs> no putters, no, no mid ranges. Like, come on, two. Come on, two. Yeah. Fuck. So yeah, I think that'd, that'd be, be kind of cool. That would be super fun. Yeah, super fun. Maybe we'll do that. Maybe we can start making videos out of these. Yeah, that'd be sweet. Out of the disc, the the dice dice challenge. Yes. So, anyways, we got done. It was fun. Mm-hmm. Um, my big take out of it was I really enjoyed using the bag. 
I was really happy to get some practice with those discs in case for some reason we do get stuck playing in the rain. At least I have a relative idea of how those discs fly. Mm-hmm. Um, you got to kick the shit out of me <laughs> handily. You did it with grace, too. You were not there then piling on uh, because I was joking around having a good time, but you know how competitive I am, and I was yeah. definitely like, oh. yeah. <laughs> I should have brought the cart, had my regular discs and the yeah. rain discs instead of just having the rain discs. Whatever. I'm then like coming up with a system for the next yeah. time we do a rain challenge. <laughs> <laughs> just in case it doesn't rain. And I'm like, dude, just fucking practice with these discs and call it. Like yeah. I'll, I, I can get the Peter Weber back on the next challenge, whatever. Um, so anyway, so then we're like, all right, well, we'll meet up in the morning. You know, standard, standard issue shit. We got the tournament in the morning. Let's mm-hmm. meet up. Yada, yada. Yeah. So I come home eat some food, went to bed, Mm -hmm. got some sleep. Nice. Yeah. (laughs) First time in three (laughs) tournaments, I was like, I'm going to get some sleep. So I got some sleep. Yeah. Like a boss. Nailed it. Woke up in the morning. It's like, yeah, rested. (laughs) Got a bunch of pranks in yesterday with this. I'm not going to use today. No. (laughs) (laughs) Wow. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. (laughs) Yeah. Uh, So anyways, get up. Tuna shows up early or on time, one of the two, money. We get all our shit together, get in the truck and go. Yep. And we drive, stopped at a gas station, something I don't remember. Anyways, we got to Indy, plenty of time. Mm-hmm. So good. Yes. Smooth, relaxed. Um, the only tricky part about Indy is there's nowhere to actually just warm up. Yeah. There's nowhere to like stand and just throw like half your bag to get your rhythm going. Yeah, you I mean the hole we were we were practicing on was all right because yeah. it's relatively open, but even still, it's like yeah, I can't throw full drives there. Yeah, but um, yeah, but I the only thing that I don't like about it, I love Indy. Yes, let's just right put yeah. that right out there. It's yeah, all, yeah, it, yeah. It's, I do too. I, I love it. Um, when I'm warming up like that, I'm still thinking like if somebody comes through, you know what I mean? Like if they're just pl- playing the holes, like yeah, we're throwing on that hole. But if somebody's coming through on those holes. Then I'm going to have to like step off, you know what I mean? And like wait for them to play the hole. And, and I can't just like relax and just like throw a bunch yeah. of shots, get my timing down. I'm still like limited to this kind of area. Like the f- fastest thing I threw, I think, were my forehand shots that I was throwing, which was like the surge. But backhand, I think the fastest thing I threw was pipe daddy. Yeah. And, uh, but it was still, it was good. For mm-hmm. what we had, we definitely warmed up well. And then we threw 16 and got to throw some like higher speed shots and, right. and all that. Um, and then we just played through bunch of holes Mm -hmm. got warmed up felt pretty good we're like yeah let's do this yes so then we start the tournament and what hole did you start on uh x4 so the extra holes hole number four right the weird long one which we practiced and that was like one of the two that you wanted to see was that one and the one after that yeah and we played there was flags i forget what Mark said, it was like the park or somebody out, like there was scouting to like redo some stuff or whatever the hell it was. And we weren't sure. And we like, we played from the flags and then, which is a difficult shot. Yeah. yeah. Actually like a pretty cool shot. Way Just cooler. like, right. We weren't sure. Like there's those, that pad basically. And then the original pad yeah. right in front of it. And, uh, we go, <laughs> so it's time to like get the round going. I'm practice putting on the basket, like off to the right, whatever hole that, like four holes from then. And then find out when my card comes, everyone's like in the same consensus. These flags aren't like to be played at all. I was like, oh shit. Like one, I know that if you guys play it, cause you guys aren't sure. And then find out later, like you're going to be all amped up about it with reason. Yeah. Then I'm like, I just hope this text goes through. Cause like <laughs> yeah. my service out there is dicey and you end up getting it. So like that yeah. doesn't happen, but that was, in my opinion, like the only part of the tournament that was like weird and that has nothing to do with the tournament director. Yeah. It's just like, I don't like, he didn't know until somebody brought it to his attention. Yeah. Whatever. Yeah. And everything so. was marked great. Like yeah. next you play this whole, cause you don't like, if you're not familiar with indie, you don't just play like this 18 and then play that 18. You play right. like one, two, then you play all the X holes and you come back and play these other holes and then you finish up your round. And then the other one, you like start on three or something and you play these yeah. holes and, and then it's like, they could make it like that, yeah. but the way they laid it out, they did a good job of science after you play a hole. Go to this hole afterwards, yeah. it's not like... No confusion. Yeah. Um, because I have been out there and people have played the wrong hole. Yep. And then that's a big issue. Yeah. So, um, yeah, that was all set up. Nothing weird. 
with the layouts that's standard like i've played tournaments out there that's the same way they break up the course for the two rounds it, it flows pretty well there's a couple of like sticky spots because those x holes are like you're kind of throwing at the basket that's right at the next tee pad and like they're a little janky at times those yeah. holes um so that kind of like messes up the flow a little bit but besides that it was pretty good we didn't wait a whole bunch yeah i the only time i think we waited was the second round on hole five yeah the hole where you started or whatever yeah yeah and it was just like one card yeah i forget we waited on two of them oh the island or the horseshoe hole what is that x7 yeah 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 Yeah, waited on that from a previous podcast of partners yeah (laughs) we'll get into that later but (laughs) anyways um so my first round I played and it was fine. Mm-hmm. I got I had like a couple sweet forehand shots, which is good because like I feel like over this week I actually figured out my forehand pretty good and like I threw it off the tee and it was dope. Yeah, threw it off the tee in warm ups, threw it off the tee during the tournament. Sweet. Yes, didn't really have issues. Was like cool. Mm-hmm. I had one issue, but that's it was a shot I wasn't familiar with, and then I just I threw the shot that I thought and it wasn't right, but it's not like I had a problem with the throw. Um. But it was just kind of a thing for me, at least, of I didn't play the course all year. And then with my different, like, changing my form, I'm comfortable, but I'm not super comfortable with, like, how my disc is going to go. Because my discs fly a little bit differently. Right. So I was, like, throwing shots that would, like, get me up there. And I just kept getting a little bit outside of where I needed to be for the birdie. But my scramble game was tight. So it worked out however it worked out, and it was fine. Yeah. Like I didn't shoot great. I didn't shoot bad. 960 something. Yeah. <laughs> just like real like clear across the board. That yeah. that was for sure what I did my first round. It yeah. was very like I'm just outside like put it like if I could be 100% <laughs> in the circle and be 100% out of the circle like birdies would come, but yeah. I just I couldn't get in the circle. I wasn't throwing like terrible shots, but it was just real weird real whatever (laughs) like just very meh like across the board yeah Yeah. i think it was i shot a 59 which was four over they only had like one hole marked as a par four which there's more than one par four on that layout so like seeing a plus four on there is way different than seeing like a one over even yeah (laughs) like wow you really no no i just (laughs) i was thinking of that too because i think i shot like a 56 or something yeah and i remember thinking like okay so it's not 54 yeah which one's the par four like that's what i was wondering because i was Mm -hmm. like if you're only going to have one of them be a par four yeah which like is x x7 is a par three right but it's actually a four Right, but I'm just, I'm just saying. Yeah, like, yeah, it, yeah. Like in the end, it doesn't really matter. But yeah, like, but I mean, it matters in long term, like what your score is afterwards. Like if you're playing everything as a th- like when you count everything as a par three, when you're tallying it up, it's super easy to add it up that right. way. But when you play everything as a par three, but really you have fours, there's a difference. When if you shoot a sixty at say toboggan, that I was explaining this to Amanda on the way or when i got home or whatever so like you shoot a 60 at toboggan pretty good like yeah. not a terrible score pretty respectable for me you shot under me, par. very good yeah. yeah and 63 is course par right but if you went and like everything's just a three and it doesn't matter then sure everyone's like shooting according to that right seeing a three under versus a six over there's a big difference yeah. like six over kind of re- resembles like oh you're like kind of on the cusp of like shooting even par which is you should be able to shoot pars but realistically if you're shooting a 54 at toboggan that's really fucking good right you just changed your life yeah yeah Yeah. so yeah when it comes to that like that's always something that's kind of dicey where it's like not just the outside looking in and seeing those scores like wow you shot four over or whatever well really like the course is right this so like even just on the extra holes there's at least three par fours like seven which is the weird horseshoe island hole yeah. and then which is after that one um eight well yeah but which eight, one's eight's eight? just a big hyzer okay and then nine is the long one no nine is then another hyzer eight is like the one where you walk over that the boards you walk oh over yeah, yeah yeah yeah, 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 yeah. Big hyzer. yes and then the next one is more yes. of a spike hyzer yes and then the next one is the first long yes. one which is the next par four and then the next yes. one is the second long one coming Which is back. another par four. Yeah. Yeah. So I have no idea which one they counted as a three. 
So you really think yeah. that the other one, you think that those are par fours? I think so. Because I think, like, they're kind of between, like, you need such a big arm to be able to get out there. Like, these are holes that are 600 plus feet. Mm-hmm. And it requires, like, one, to be able to do it, maybe, I don't know, yeah. concrete tee pads at some point, which I think are coming, like, down the down the way. But I for sure messed up a couple tee shots because... <laughs> i'll tell you what those slid on those things those smooth 85 beats per minute yeah no slipping on those tee pads <laughs> and we we because we started at eight yeah so we played those long holes basically we were the second group to play the long holes so those yeah. pad pads they those areas hadn't gotten all scuffed and slipped yeah. up and we had one guy uh mark metzger on the second one when he threw he slipped mm-hmm I thought his eyes were going to pop out of his head. It was so great because <laughs> oh, I was God. watching him. And then when he goes to throw like his foot slipped, and you just saw like he's oh, got no. glasses and then like his eyes like just as, and when he threw it, it kind of, he kind of skied it a little bit. And I was like, yeah. dude, your eyes opened so big. And he yeah. was like, I thought I was going down. I didn't tell him your story, <laughs> but I was like, yeah, that happens sometimes. Yeah. Yeah. But th- those, t- those tee pads can get you. So yeah, I don't know. I just felt like overall, I, I just thought it was funny that they picked one as the par four yeah because even like hole one is that a par three no like hole one hole is one. at least a par four maybe a five like on scoring like five like I think what's is the average yeah. average because yeah. taking a four on there feels good like if i four it if you four it mm-hmm. if jared like jared and fred and dan and Kyle, like all of it is like four feels really fucking good a three would feel like amazing. I remember first time I went out there. No, second time I went out there, I played with you guys. Uh-huh. You took me out there. And I remember I won hole one. Yeah. And I had the tee pad on hole two. <laughs> and I was like, fuck yeah. Yeah. Yes. And then and, what'd you do? And then, <laughs> and then I think it was like three or four holes later. I was like crying. I, I don't really remember it. Yeah. We went out yeah. there the first time. Remember? And we were trying to figure out like what the difference between I remember this. We went out and we were trying to figure out what the difference between the shorts and the longs were. Okay. In terms of like scoring. Okay. And I had shot like five down or seven down or something on the shorts. Mm-hmm. And then we played longs and I was like five or seven over from the longs. Okay. When, it, when it was just eighteen holes. Yeah. And uh I remember thinking like because after the first round of shorts, I was like I'm yeah ready, I'm ready for this shit, dude. yeah i'm about and, to get some faces <laughs> yeah and then the uh the switch from the shorts to longs i think that day the difference was like 12 strokes for me and yeah. i was like mm-hmm. and then <laughs> and then we went out we played with jared and we were playing that and i remember like yeah i won hole one yeah and i was like yeah, yeah. looks good <laughs> and then no i didn't get it but yeah I, I just thought that that was a really funny idea like there's yeah. one par four and i was just trying to rack around in my brain of like i wonder which one it is yeah. Like, I wonder which one was the one that they were looking at. And they're like, this is a par four. Yeah. What about those other ones? Fuck that. Like, yeah. this is it. Yeah. So, yeah. Like, you, you you see people take sevens on hole one. Yeah. No problem. Yes. Yeah. Six. It's five. real easy. Because yep. my thinking is, is that to get a three on that, you need two, like, perfect shots. Yep. yep. And perfect is a hard thing to do. So, doing that, the reward being, like eagle like having that hole be a par five i wouldn't be surprised yeah but i think it's a softer ish five yeah but not like i don't know if it was on a scale of like one to three or whatever it is it's like one two ish for being a par five if it being a par four it's like i'm really cool at just getting a par then yeah whatever yeah i would i would put it as a par four yeah um and and yeah, like it's it's a par four that like you're playing for the par, and if for some reason that drive gets all you the get way it, through yeah. smooth, then you're like, all right, I'm gonna try to make a run at it. Because yeah. the the one of the trickier parts with that hole is is like just putting. Because mm-hmm. there's like if you get any kind of distance outside of that basket, like there isn't really a putt. Yeah. When we were warming up, I said I find it entertaining or funny, even though it's not. When somebody like Nick Nacks down, remember. you remember saying this? <laughs> yeah. Nick yeah, Nacks yeah. down the hole, and then when they go to putt, they hit the putt, the, the tree, like right in front of them to yeah. like not get the five and to get the six yeah. or to not get the six and take the seven. And that happened during my tournament round. To you? No. Okay, I took good. a four. Okay. Um, But yeah, it happened to someone <laughs> on my card 
and they uh, they went to go putt and literally just like hit the tree Don't. right in front of them. <laughs> I was like, oh shit! I hope I didn't conjure that out of the. Yeah. But uh, yeah, so whatever. So then we played second round. Um, well, first round, let's get into it. So I started a hole eight, made it all the way around. Everything was like semi cool. And yeah. I was thinking like, I was playing it in my head as par threes and knowing that like, if I shot 54, it would be pretty good. Yep. Like not great, but pretty good. Mm -hmm. And that was kind of my goal was to shoot 54. So when I was like coming into seven, I didn't keep track of my score tightly, but I was thinking like, I'm right there. If I can get a three on this, I might shoot 53, 54, whatever. It'll be fine. Mm hmm so I decided to throw a forehand drive on that hole, which I've never done. And I even told my card, I was like, I'm going to throw a forehand drive here for the first time in my life, even though I've never done it. But I, for some reason, I just wasn't thinking like out and over. Mm -hmm. Because on the backhand shot, you're trying to just get it around that one tree to go over because inevitably it fades out a little bit and you end up kind of right where you want to be. So it didn't translate in my brain to the forehand of how I was trying to throw the shot. Mm -hmm. So I should have thrown like the surge on an easy line out wide and then just been up there because i never want to be really tight to the mouth because then i feel like it cuts your angles if you're a little bit farther off you've got better angles mm -hmm. so not what i did i took the first <laughs> run raptor which is like my more stable kind of forehand disc and i tried to cut the corner yeah threw a decent shot kind of caught like this like flimsy part of a of a thing on the little pine tree didn't really affect the disc too much it was just a bad shot mm -hmm. and then it kind of like cut me off so i was like really short of the corner I didn't even have, like I said, I was like, I never lay up on that hole. I was just throwing yeah. across. So they were trying to find someone else's disc, and I was like, I'm just going to pitch up. Mm -hmm. So I'm just going to like do my pitch up to the, basically somewhere near the mouth and then throw it across and just douched the pitch up. <laughs> just like, <laughs> like there's the trees right there on that corner. Like there's two good sized trees right on that corner. Yeah. And just to get around it. And there's so much room on the left. And I don't know why I was like trying to like, cut the corner like right around those trees but inevitably i threw my upshot and it hit the tree and then landed like right behind the tree mm -hmm. so then <laughs> for my third shot i was like i'm not doing two layups on the same so i literally had nothing yeah so i just grabbed my creamsicle force from a standstill and just threw it into the branches in front of me to get it over the pond and i was yeah. like i'm just gonna throw it so fucking hard <laughs> that unless i like square something up like it should get across yeah I threw it, it hit a branch and went like up in yeah. the air. And then I was like, fuck. And they were like, oh. And I was like, did it make it across? And they're like, yeah, you kind of gave it a run. And I was like, oh, sweet. Yeah. I can still save the four. We'll be yeah. good. <laughs> and then I had, I ended up like 20, 25 to the left, but I had like a weird, weird stance with these like bushes in front of me. And my putt normally comes really low. I kind of like trim the grass when I putt. Mm -hmm. So I'd like kind of stand up a little bit and I just hit the chains and the basket at the same time. And it just went off. I took the five. And then ended with a 56. And I was nice. like, fuck, the 54 was right there. But yep. that hole will get you. Yeah, especially when you're throwing a tee shot that you've not only barely thrown, never thrown. Yeah. yeah. And then I made the <laughs> same, I literally made the same mistake with the same disc in the exact same situation on Sunday. I really? just realized that now. Yeah. I was really? like, I've never forehanded this hole before. <laughs> oh, yeah. I got yeah, this. Yeah. And then I threw the first run Raptor too tight <laughs> on the inside, caught the, yeah, I literally did the exact same thing. That's both, hilarious. Both not with good results. So. So we finish our round, yeah. and we are on the hunger bus. Yeah. Big time. Yeah. I was waiting around for a while. Like, I guess we got done real fast. Yeah. And it started as, like, be back by one thirty at the earliest, then one forty-five, And then by the time you guys finished, it was be back by 2. I'm pretty sure that I was like, hey, we got to be back by 2. Maybe I told somebody else. I don't remember very clearly. Yeah. Either way, hungry. Let's go get food. I already had, like, Subway figured out where it was at or whatever you thought to, you had yeah i thought i had it figured out well i did to an extent and then my phone had other plans right <laughs> so we end up finding a subway like right. the route we took <laughs> we're driving on the route yeah. to yeah. the subway and then all of a sudden it's like it yeah. just literally like switches the route and is like oh you're actually supposed to be going backwards and over here and whatever and yeah. then i was like Fuck. well the one well that was super dicey was the two stop signs when you're going out and the one is like literally a hairpin turned to the right or right. just like a regular turn to the right. And it looked like to go to the next one and the, then go the right. The second stop sign. Yeah. yeah. Like yeah, I yeah, looked yeah, at yeah. it. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> and then when we went to the second stop sign, it was like, you should be going backwards. And yeah. <laughs> All so right. Whatever. Like, fuck this. So we just drove a couple more, yeah. couple more stop signs down. And then we saw Got to Main Street. You said yeah. something about Main Street. Go left. Yeah. Go to yeah. the roundabout. There's a subway that like 
there's only one way in there. <laughs> yeah, it's super dicey. Yeah. Like we we could see the subway, but then we're like, how the fuck do we get yeah. in there? Real cheap rent, we found out. Yeah, <laughs> yeah you well. have to take a helicopter. <laughs> <laughs> so we got in there we walked in bella was making sandwiches yeah and uh whatever the guy's name was and they kno- they knocked out some sandwiches for us she, yeah. put, she put the wrong sauce on my sandwich but did she she put barbecue sauce on my sweet and onion you wanted chicken teriyaki <laughs> yeah <laughs> what I was did like, you ask for i forget sweet onion chicken teriyaki oh, okay. and i saw her just like doing the barbecue <laughs> sauce and i was like whatever it's gonna be fine was it good it was all right okay i was <laughs> so, so wasn't very good no i was hungry <laughs> yeah. though Oh, and uh, so whatever we got our subs and you're like do you want to eat here or i asked you like do you want to eat here and you were yeah. like yeah and i was like all right because i just wanted yeah, a yeah. break from the tournament and being outside and whatever and i wanted to sit down and be like cool and because it's covid no one else is going to sit in there yeah right because like, yeah and only... they also only had one table right. set up because they only like, had one table the... yes right. so we sat down and ate and i smashed like, our sandwiches smashed them decompressing yeah. and then yeah. it came time for the cookies yeah and, and I was like, I was ready to go. And you're like, no, I'm just going to eat my cookies here. <laughs> yeah. Because I didn't, I like, yeah. I had no idea that we were under a time crunch. Yeah. I was thinking like most of his tournaments, he does like jumbo toss, ring of fire, all this stuff during the lunch break. And yeah. normally it's like an obscene amount of time. Mm-hmm. So in my brain, I was like, I have no rush to get back there and then make idle chit chat or whatever. Like I'd rather sit here with you, decompress, joke around and then go back. Mm-hmm. And uh, so we, I ate two of the cookies. Yeah. I did not eat all three. And I was yeah. like, all right, let's get going. <laughs> we drove back. It's not that far of a drive. We got back. <clears throat> and then as we're pulling into the park. We see nobody. We see nobody. <laughs> no, no, I'm sorry. We saw two people. Yeah, but no players. Casual players. Yeah. And they were not in the tournament. No. So we pull up and we were like, fuck. Yep. And then you said, he said two o'clock at the earliest. And I remember yeah. being like, what? yeah and i was like oh shit so we get out of the truck i literally just grabbed my cart handle short i didn't even put it up yeah and the guy's like hey are you guys with the tournament yeah we were like yeah yeah and you're like i'm darren harrison like chase card what hole am i on he's on like five or whatever yep and i do the same thing and he's like you're on eight and then we both start i just start running behind you people have already started throwing yeah like it's already yeah yeah, he he said we just did tee off yes so we're running past people. People are like chucking their discs. We're like, you're way ahead of me. I'm behind. You make it to your hole. And as I'm running, I'm just trying to figure out which hole is hole eight. Yeah. And then like just before I pass you guys, I realize what fucking hole I'm on. And I'm one hole short by maybe 100 feet of the farthest fucking point to get to. Yeah. And like as I run past, there's just like, hate 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 so much hate not necessarily to you but just like i knew what was happening and i was just like i i hope that they had some lull like your team like your card had there was nobody really in front of you there was nobody really behind you pressuring them to tee off they knew you were coming in just running late yeah and when i get there like the next card is already on the hole i'm starting on like putting so i'm like sweet two sevens <laughs> yeah. like i get to nine and then they're like putting out so i just start walking up because it's like i've already missed t off on that hole or whatever and they're like no 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 like t off whatever so as like i'm trying to breathe and collect and whatever I'm like, all right, I'm just gonna throw this shot. My and like, meanwhile, my left quad is like blown up. Like he's he's mad at me, <laughs> and I'm like, I'm just gonna throw a sidearm, whatever. Like I just I made a decision, stuck with it, whatever. Because at this point, who fought? like I'm already so mad about this seven, where it's just like I'm already down by whatever strokes. So, like I'm four over. Now I've doubled that by not being able to play a hole, right? And uh, throw that shot release it left goes through a tree watch where it goes walk to where it went can't find it can't like even my card comes and helps as they should even the other card behind us comes to help like immediately because they already know like i'm late like i just ran past them and all that and like thanks guys but also like i just i gave up like probably in half the time just because it's just like again like I don't want to create some sort of backup and to just hate, 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 hate. And like, I'm like, 
I've just paid sixty dollars for nothing, basically. Yeah. Like I'm just I'm out of it, whatever. And uh go back to the T pad. They're still looking, like as I go well, kind of looking. My card gave up when I gave up. And uh throw my next shot. I'm uh, I throw Heiser off to the right. And I'm probably a circle's edge, and I actually almost make my putt. Like, I hit high left side for that putt for four. Take a five on that hole to start. So I was like, sweet, start seven, five. Whatever. Like, I can't do anything about it. And I'm, like, the whole time I'm going back and forth, like, well, I could take this opportunity to, like, just try to scramble my way back and make this a thing. Because I've had to do it before. Like, it stays with Jared. And <laughs> he missed one hole. I missed two. I took two sevens. He took one. And I shot, like, a one over at flip after taking two sevens or whatever. Yeah. And Jared lost because Seven. he missed hole one. Right. Yeah. Um, so I'm, I'm I'm doing this back and forth. I'm, like so focused on just breathing because i know like this isn't darren's fault and whatever and really i'm trying to hope that like you're playing well and not letting this affect you knowing yeah. that like maybe zach's mad at me or not i don't know like what you're thinking but yeah. legitimately i'm like i hope this doesn't affect you around because you were able to make it there on time and not miss any holes hopefully you can like take a second to breathe collect yourself and shoot well and uh i'm just like i'm going through this war in my head and eventually I make the decision, which I know wasn't really the right decision, but I made it nonetheless of just like, fuck it. Like, not that I'll just throw it all away because I'm not, but I'm just going to practice just trying to get past holes or whatever. Yeah. And then eventually, like, so what is it? Nine. Is that weird? So 10. That's like kind of downhill and through the trees there. I was just like, I'm just going to throw this like the line that I want, but with a faster disc. And I'm just going to try to get past it it, roast it whatever and i did i just threw it low so i threw an fd instead of a mid-range that i normally throw (laughs) like put it within 20 i get there like i'm still like my left leg's blown out whatever go to putt like potato hand it like what miss the putt take a three next hole i don't know what did i do on that hole i tried getting there i threw the wrong disc i threw a way faster disc than i needed to but I was expecting it to like stand up or whatever. This doesn't stand up, even in the crazy headwind that we were getting. Yeah. And so that was kind of like a, that's actually kind of cool because that disc, I wasn't sure in a headwind, like I thought it would for sure flip up in it and it didn't. Yeah. Uh, And then the whole after that, I was just like, I'm going to like, I made a rage throw happen, but made it a very clear and concise definitive way of doing it like i went through the beats of like the metronome type thing planted and like normally i throw a fastest like if i were to throw an fd on that hole that's normally what i do it's like 375 slightly downhill a little weird it's, and, a, it's a little weird it's yeah a little bit of a weird line yeah, yeah. And <clears throat> i go up there i had putter mid-range fairway driver on there and i was just trying to feel out the wind what it looks like in my like as soon as i get there what do i see initially and i was just like buzz i was like okay because i already know how hard i'm going to throw this what am i going to try to do and it yeah. was realistically mid-range or driver and at first it was i'm going to throw the fd and i'm going to try to get across the path right like get to the extra holes yes yeah. and uh after throwing the buzz it was like i'm glad i didn't throw the fd because i for sure would have gotten like across the path yeah. into the path of the next one because i got ru- you'd made a run on f yeah 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 because i got buzz i hit it real clean like not crazy hard but like i got like power transfer if i built up a hundred power i got probably 95 into the disc it yeah. felt amazing it was hilarious and even after i threw it i was just like that's hilarious because i know i know where it's going like distance wise and as long as long as it misses that one tree like I'm putting and I was like probably 10 short of pin D putting on the right side, just outside the circle. Okay. And it was just like, that's just comical. And yeah. then even in, um, our round at Stony, there was a couple times where I hit it super clean and whatever, like 17 on green. Like I threw a putter, like more than halfway down that. And I was just like, dude, I'm putting from here from not very far. <laughs> so yeah. like one day, like not anything realistic, like in a tournament but i could throw a putter there at some point which would be awesome awesome yeah (laughs) Yeah. 375 yeah give me my mercy (laughs) yeah let's go (laughs) so but eventually like i calmed down and it was legitimately like i hope darren's like doing good i hope he's doing all right like i'm over here like not throwing shit away but 
I'm still like beating people on my card at some point X, Y, and Z. Yeah. And then they started birdieing, or at least two of them started birdieing more often. And then, um, I think all of them besides one for the whole tournament beat me because of sevens yeah, or seven. Um, yeah. And then after that, there's obviously some shit talk of like, I'm just poking around like what I, like, I don't like mean it, mean it, but it was, it's happening. It's the thing. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah. Cause I saw you at one point we had three holes left or something and you were done. Yeah. And I saw you walking, your head was down and I was like, he didn't snap out of it. Nope. <laughs> and I was like, okay. I didn't think at that point that you had missed a hole. Yeah. Because Mark told us as we were running out, he goes, let, make them let you play the holes. Don't take any sevens. Yeah. And then um, when I got to mine, they were waiting for me. But I was still thinking like, all right, well, even if he gets out there and they're like finishing up the hole, you should still be able to play it. I didn't yeah. think that like the card behind you would have started playing that hole. Yeah. Um, but then I was like, oh, maybe like the run out there and then being angry and then all that. Yeah. Like, maybe you just couldn't <laughs> snap out of it throughout the round. And I saw you and I was like, hey, dude. I heard it's like, hey, fish, what's up? Yeah. <laughs> he tried hugging me or whatever tuna. and it was just tuna yeah hey buddy hey. hello and you're like head was <laughs> down still friends right and you're walking yeah. and i was like oh shit this didn't yeah. go well <laughs> and then like i was like hey man and you were like just finish your round yeah <laughs> go finish your round and then i like gave you like a hug and you were like not into it and you're like just go finish your round yeah. and, I was and like, it really didn't have like anything to do with you it was yeah. just i'm trying to get this out. like i it, it's happening it's a thing it's got to come out because it's. I'm not trying to hold on to it, and it was legit. Like, I could have done that. I just chose not to. Yeah. Like, whatever. And it was just that I, I got to make a decision. Like, I'm done. Like, going back and forth with myself. So what? What are you gonna do, Zach? Like, yeah. All right, here we go. Like, it was a, a weird, different practice, if you will, of of doing that. But still, like, there's that lingering. Like, I paid money to play this and try to compete and like try to get back into the mix of whatever and then it's just like sevens like in the background just like talking shit yeah like (laughs) yeah just threw that away yeah so it was i actually was able to throw shots more freely it felt like versus trying to be too perfect on some stuff and like really seeing or where i could take that like in a tournament setting and where i was putting myself and what was actually happening and realizing like oh this isn't so bad like what's going on like if i'm just throwing a shot and then going from there like that was actually a good thing that's why like at the end of it like i wasn't very mad right like whatever it was like i'm just still sorting stuff out i see you (laughs) and i'm just like kind of doing this thing in my head but also like it was more so like go finish your round not like come on fuck face but like you do you i'm gonna go do me we're going to talk later. We drove together. Right. We're going to drive <laughs> and, home. And podcast. So, right. yeah. Uh. yeah. Mine, I started on five. <laughs> and five is one of the shots, which is funny. But five is definitely one of the holes I was looking most forward to playing. Yeah. And then when I realized, like, that's the hole I'm starting on. And I have like, so I smoke cigarettes sometimes. And, uh, like, as of last winter, I literally couldn't run. Like, my body wouldn't let me run. So I've only really had the ability run to... Run or jump. Or jump. Oh, yeah. But I've only had the ability to <laughs> run for, like, a little bit of time. <laughs> and then it was like, now you're going to run, like, a pretty good distance. Yeah. Dragging this cart where the handle's really low and yeah. whatever. But I did it. I got out there, but I was, like, hurting, for sure. I was yeah. Like, <laughs> you know, whatever. And uh, my legs are on fire and all this other shit. But I couldn't... <laughs> I couldn't help but feel. I was like, dude, I did it. I actually ran out here. Yeah. Like, like I know I have to throw this shot. I also really loved when you're like, <laughs> I had to run so far, this, that, whatever. Like, people are at the card complaining about how their round's going. <laughs> like, oh, you don't say. Yeah. Well, <laughs> That's that sounds, crazy. Sounds terrible. Yeah. So, <laughs> anyways. Yeah, but I was just pumped that, like, I could run. And yeah. I ran all the way out there. And, like, when I got out there, like, my knees didn't hurt. Yeah. And I was like, it's pretty sweet that we've been working out. I yeah, like I never would have been able to make that run, like even like a couple. Yeah, weeks even ago. me too. Like I know I had to make stops for sure, but I was also trying. Like I feel like I could have gone like all the way. Yeah, but then when I got there, I was I was trying to like conserve yeah, something. Like too. I didn't want to burn myself out entirely, right. so spurts of it and all that. And I kind of had the same thing. Is like this actually feels not terrible. I feel right. whatever. 
like my cardio it feels like it's gotten a lot better just from the couple times that we've been working out anyways yeah so it's like already some sort of gains like on top of the stuff i've already been feeling as it is thus far yeah so <laughs> yeah silver linings or whatever the fuck it is <laughs> so my card was kind of waiting for me one guy had teed off or no they had all i think they had all te- i don't know whatever either way they two, waited for you two guys had teed off and then they're waiting for me so i got there and i went to go tee off and i tugged it a little bit yeah would you throw i threw the thrasher okay i didn't want to throw anything like where I was trying to do something sweet because I already knew like my ability to do sweet was probably really limited. Yeah. <laughs> and even as I was standing there and they let me catch my breath for a minute, I was still thinking like this probably isn't going to go great. Yeah. Because like my whole body is what it is and you know, whatever. Mm-hmm. Um, so I wasn't trying to do sweet. Mm-hmm. I was trying to like get out there. Yeah. And realistically I was like, I want the three on the whole, but kind of first whole thing. I was like, I want the three. If I take the four, I'll be fine. Yep. Especially after running all the way out here, I'll be good. Yeah. Through the, <laughs> through the shot, just pulled a little bit, hit the tree, kicked out to the left. So my drive probably went like 150 feet. Mm-hmm. So at that point, I was still like, I can still take the four. But I could have thrown like the hyzer and come back into the fairway, and it would have been like a trickier four, or kind of throw out and have it fade over and be like a little bit easier. So I was like, I'm just going to play a hyzer flip down the outside. And it'll be cool. But my disc was like on the side of the hill. Mm-hmm. And there's tall stuff here. So I had to come in from the side and then throw across my body. Mm-hmm. Like while stepping up onto the hill to throw. I should have just thrown something really stable. And then if I fade out left, it's no big deal. Instead, I threw uh, the X nuke flip. And um, I, I like my run up was okay. I could only do like a two step run up. It was okay. I got it out all right. And then it just kind of turned over and just went into the shit on the right. Basically, where like an okay drive would have landed. Mm-hmm. Um, but I didn't really have that good of an upshot from there. So then at that point, I was like, all right, I'm throwing three. Sometimes you can get that hyzer shot to come in at that basket. But I was like, if I fuck that up, like, I'm not sure. And then at that point, I kind of made my piece of like, I'm just going to throw the meteor. I'm just going to throw it out on, on an ante. And I know it's going to hold the ante. And I'll land somewhere at circle's edge. Mm-hmm. best case scenario and if i'm a little bit long i'm a little bit long i'd rather risk it on the putt than risk it on this shot yeah. because one i'm still not comfortable i'm still like so through the meteor came around they were like stay up so i knew like the line was good because if it was bad they wouldn't have said anything so yeah. they were like stay up i was like okay cool <laughs> and then it hit and i was like 35 40 out okay and i was like cool so i could make this for the four worst case scenario i'm going to take the five i don't want to start with a five but whatever through the putt terrible yeah <laughs> yeah high nose up not enough power so i just went like mm-hmm. and then i left myself like a 20 footer and i was like i can't start with a six yeah no offense <laughs> to you yeah but um so i hit the putt took a five everyone else took i think one person took a four and two guys took threes mm-hmm. and i was thinking the same thing you were thinking i was like sweet like i really wanted to make a move this round and i just gave up two yeah. right there now i'm at a five um and then after that, I just kind of went the next few holes to play safe because mm-hmm. I didn't want to like have it turn into a thing where like I'm just bleeding out strokes. So the next one I just threw like, you know, easy, easy up, drop in three. And then the next one we had like crazy wind. I normally throw like a high hyzer, but with the wind, I was like, yeah, I don't feel comfortable. So I threw a thumber, machete, did some stuff that I wasn't expecting it to do. It yeah. landed like. 40 out weird by this tree didn't make it took a three and i said like okay as long as i'm not bogey and i'm fine and then i just parred for like a long ass time mm-hmm. um i think i got i don't know whatever i got a birdie somewhere but i just like basically saved everything like my drives were all like good not great yeah they all like hit kind of hit the line whatever and if i did hit something and get like a weird kick like my scramble game was good forehand backhand whatever like i was good we got into the extra holes, and when we went into the extra holes, the best I've ever done in my life on the extra holes was three down, I think three or four down or something like that. Mm-hmm. And I was like, um, I think it was four down was like the best I ever did on the extra holes. So I was like, I definitely want to get two down on the extra holes. Um, and I think, I think I shot three down on the extra holes. I didn't bogey any of them. A was the best throw I had all day. 
Yeah. I looked away. I didn't watch my disc. The timing of my run up was good. My pull through was good. And I just like threw it. And then I watched it and I was like, that's perfect. And I was like six feet from the pin. Nice. And I was like, cool. And then B's that stupid one where you just throw into the trees and yeah, whatever. So I, 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 I think I shot like a couple down, three down or something on the extra holes. And I was like, cool. And then we played whatever holes. And then we got to 18 and I took a five on 18 because I early released the drive um, with the thrasher. Now that I'm thinking about it, like all over the weekend, the holes that I really paid were throwing the thrasher off yeah. the tee pad. I early released it. And I don't know if it's something mental, like I'm really trying to flip it or what, but um, and maybe yeah. you need a proto Hades instead. I don't, I don't know. We'll see. So, uh, <laughs> so anyways, 18, I took a five decent scramble game. Like my drive was so fucked. Um, the only thing is my upshot, I hit a tree again, instead of like trying to play to the area by the basket, I'm thinking like, I just need to get around that tree. And then inevitably I throw it right at it. Yeah. <laughs> so I took a five on 18. Um, and then we finished out or whatever. And I was like, Oh, I think I shot a 50 three or something i think i finished like one down it was like 53 like mm -hmm. just playing everything as a par three and it worked out okay i cashed um i wasn't last cash but i like I, I finished i think 10th or something like that and then i cashed so i was like cool with that and then we rode home and we're joking around and getting it all out yeah. uh, about the late lunch and all that stuff <laughs> and and whatever and uh stopped at at cj's get an energy drink i got a i got a different meteor because the meteor that I got is the tour series mm -hmm. and it's not really flippy. It's almost a buzz SS. The only difference is, is if I put, if I put it over a little bit, it'll hold it longer and like more consistently than my buzz SS. Mm -hmm. But if I throw it flat, it basically flies almost the same as my buzz SS. And okay. I wanted one going to Hudson. I know that there's a lot of those holes. So I was like, I want to get like a regular meteor that'll be flippier. So it'll, I can do it without having to work too hard. Yeah. So I got that and then whatever. So we came home, you took off, we hugged it out. It was smooth. We moved on with our lives. Yeah. Um, I bribed you with Taco Bell. Yeah. Which was good. Yeah, that's fine. <laughs> <laughs> and then, uh, yeah. And then yesterday I had the tournament. Wait, wait, wait. We both got Taco Bell. We both got chicken quesadillas. And the one was cut real weird. <laughs> oh my God. I almost killed us looking at Zach's quesadilla. So I'm driving down the expressway eating my quesadilla. Yeah. And Zach's like, look at how this quesadilla is cut. And I don't know like what <laughs> fucking happened, but I was like, what? And I look and then I just kind of moved over like a lane. And I was like, oh man. I was like, dude, I can't. It's like, what if that's how it ended? Uh, yeah. What if that was it? Right. Yeah, like, could they solve the mystery? <laughs> yeah. Like, they're burned alive. There's just like gelatinous. Taco Bell everywhere. Yeah. There's just gelatinous <laughs> like human body. But like in one hand, there's like one hand that survives and it's this like weird cut <laughs> quesadilla. And they're like, man, that's fucking Save the quesadilla. disgusting. Look at how this quesadilla is cut. <laughs> what if that was a cause? But, um, yeah, so we, uh, we ended the day, hugged it out. And then, um, I got up on Sunday, met up with Will, went to Hudson yeah. to play Hudson and Hudson's cool. Cause it's got that whole area that you can warm up. Like you just throw off the back of wherever the building is yeah. and there's that field. Now throwing was pretty good. Back ends, forehands, which were warmed up, had the metronome going. Cool. Started on OG. I got to play with Bauman, which was cool. And then two people I don't know. And it was kind of the same thing. It was literally like indie. Like my first round was literally like Indy. Like I took two bogeys, which were both mental mistakes. Like one was the forehand where I was like, fuck it. I got this. I even said, fuck it. Like, and yeah. then I threw the drive like shit scrambled. There was no way to scramble to make the three scrambled, saved the four, got a bogey. And then the other bogey I got, someone walked across the hole as I was driving. Yeah. And instead of stopping, I was like, what the fuck's going on? And yeah. I just <laughs> threw it anyways. And uh, those were my only bogeys. I just didn't have the familiarity with the course to like really put stuff where I needed to for birdies. Like mm -hmm. there's a few holes that like I kind of naturally have dialed in, but like the touch for this shot, like I just didn't quite have it. So I'd catch like a tree and then put it up and whatever. So I was even going into two bogeys, two birdies going into the last hole. We finished on hole 17. Okay. And so I was like, I'm going to birdie this hole. Like I want to finish under and I want to finish on like a good thing. So I'm standing at the tee pad. I got messed up on my run up. Like all of a sudden, <laughs> like my feet were like, Ugh. Yeah. <laughs> and so I stopped and I was like, okay, I like, this isn't hole two at Hudson. Like, I'm not just like 
I'm in hole two at Hideaway. Like, I'm yeah. not just going to arm it. Like, uh, it was the same thing. Where I was like, oh. Yeah. <laughs> and I was almost going to throw it. And then I was like, no, I'm going to wait. And so I went back, regrouped, went up. And my footwork was still dicey mm-hmm. and weird. And then I just kind of threw it. And so it, <laughs> it kind of went out, nose up. And it, like, turned a little bit, but was, like, really high going down there. And it was, like, on the right-hand side or whatever. And then it just fell. And I just got lucky. Like, it just, like, fell in between the branches of the tree or whatever and landed, like, right in the middle of the path. And I had, like, a 50-footer, 45, 50-footer or whatever. And I was like, I'm going to make this putt. And so Bauman had a feeling because I was like, this will put me under. This will put me at 53. So Bauman had a feeling I was going to make the putt. So he got behind me and videotaped it. Yeah. And I, like, lined up and just, like, hit it. (laughs) Left it out a little right and let it fade in, fade it in, smashed it. It's a good like, looking putt. Yeah. I was like, sweet. Yeah. I'm under. Cool. Like, I'm happy <laughs> with that. Like, on, on OG, my goal going out there was 52. Because mm-hmm. it was like, I can throw a 52. Like, I know I can throw in the 40s, but not playing it in a year, whatever. I was like, you know, 52. Yeah. So when I shot a 53, I was like, nah, fuck it. Right. It's mm-hmm. good. Load Will up. We get done. He shot a 54. We load up to go get food. Mm-hmm. last time I was with Will and we were at Hudson when we went, went to go get food on the way back we missed a turn mm. drove all the way around this big thing got back had to hustle <laughs> to play the second round so this time I was like you got the directions and he's like yeah so we get out and then like his phone cuts out and he's like I don't have any service or whatever and I'm like don't you have 5G yeah he got like a new phone that's like you know <laughs> the size of, of the patents <laughs> so he's he's next to me and he's like yeah, dude, my my phone just doesn't have service. And I was like, "Don't you have 5G?" Yeah. And he's like, "Not in Dexter." And I was like, "Oh, okay, cool." So then we had no service. We're just driving. And I was like, "Well, I think it's this way or whatever." And so we went and there's a, and there's the subway in the gas station and you have to go through that like one lane tunnel. Yeah. You know what I mean? That one lane overpass to get to it. So we get there and I was like, "Cool." We get out, we go in, subway's closed. Nice. In the gas station. Uh, and I was like, "All right, cool." So he gets stuff. I have stuff in my car because after hunts, like I have a box of, you know, like I have everything I need because yeah. who knows what's going to happen. Yeah. So he's like, well, are you going to get anything? I was like, no, I think I got like this Mr. Vapor or something. And I was like, I'm just, you know, so in case mine dies during the round, whatever. So we load back up, go back to the course, get straight back to the course. Don't fuck the turn up. We get back there and we have an hour. Really? Once, when we got back, we had an hour. Oh, my God. Because the girl's card or one of the cards or whatever was like really slow getting back. And so whatever. So tee off was going to be at 2.30 or something. I don't know. So I was like, well, cool. We can play some of the holes because like I never played to champ baskets. So we were playing four holes to champ baskets and whatever. And I was like, all right, cool. So we did those, warmed up a little bit, spent some time looking for discs, did whatever. And I was like, cool. So I started on hole eight, which I was super pumped about because like all there's like that little birdie run right before it. So all round, no matter what happens, I can still be like, I can make a run late, right? Yep. <laughs> like I can get four or five and six, you know, like whatever it is. Um, so three, I decided I was just going to play it for four mm-hmm. and just use a putter, 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 drop in yeah. four. Cause like, fine. My, my forehand's feeling much better, but I do not have the confidence to hit that off the tee on that shot. Mm-hmm. So I was like, it'll be fine. Four will be good. Some people will three it great for them. A lot of people are going to five it. I'll do it. So we started on hole eight, and it was the same shit as hole five on Indy. I had the thrasher. I'm up there, and I've never missed that shot. Yeah. Like every time I've played that hole, I've thrown like the exact shot. I land right in a good spot. I throw it on there. Like that's a hole where I make up strokes. Yeah. So I was like, sweet. This would be a great one to start on. No pressure, no nerves. Just fucking early released it, hit a tree. And on that hole, if you early release it, you are totally fucked. Yeah. Forehand. Backhand hit a thing, another hit a thing, forehand, whatever. So I started with a six, and I was like, sweet. This is my new second round thing. I just start, yeah. like, totally dog shitting on the first <laughs> hole. And so I just turned to Brandon because I knew the day before when you had gotten the seven for missing the hole, I played with Brandon Johnson. Shout out. I love the guy. I, yeah. lo- I love playing with him. Um, and I told him, like, before we started, I was like, cool, man. We get to at least play one tournament round a year together. You know, a lot of time we play at States or whatever. But, um, yeah, so I just turned to him, and I was like, well, it's better than if I missed the hole because that would have been a seven. <laughs> and he's like, yeah, that's one way to look at it. And I was like, yeah, but I was I was being serious because yeah. I was like, well, six sucks, but I could have like missed this hole and yeah. taken a seven. So I was like, well, six isn't so bad. And then I just kind of snapped out of it. 
Like that was it. Because maybe because the day before I did the same shit. Mm-hmm. That when I had an excuse today, like Sunday, I just fucking blew it. Yeah. But I was like, whatever. So I shot a um, par, then whatever. There, there's a lot of fours on that course because of like there's big ass holes and, and yeah. whatever. So we played through. I got that six. I took four fours. And then on the monster hole, I took a seven. Bad decision. Mm-hmm. Whatever it is. And then we were coming up the back. And I looked. I was like, I know this is a kiss of death. I got like a couple birdies along the way. I was like, I know this is a kiss of death. Let me see the card. Yeah. So I looked. And I had like <laughs> 10 bogey strokes, <clears throat> which wasn't bad. Because I started with a six. That's three. I got a seven. That's four. And then I took three fours. Yeah. So I was like, all right. 10 and then i had three birdie strokes or something i don't know so like all right i'm seven over and i was like i do not want to shoot in the 60s like i don't care what course it is other than toboggan and even toboggan i'm trying to get to 59 yeah like i don't want to i don't want to hand it (laughs) in and be like 60 something (sighs) so um so at that point i was like all right cool i can do this i know i'm gonna four three and then i got the birdie run so the only real trick to this is like i just have to really like hit all my shots Mm -hmm. and from that point till we finished i did it exactly and then i finished at 59 i had like an easy pitch up hit the putt on seven and i was like yes 59 (laughs) and the other guy on my card was like if i take the two on this i'll get a 59 and i was thinking like dude i caught you like because wow um and i did and then i ended up actually brandon took a three on six i mean a three on hole eight okay he did it you know exactly boom 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 Mm mm-hmm so I knew I was three strokes down to him starting. and uh, But on the extra holes, like A through F there, I was one down for that, which was hot for the tournament, which yeah. I felt really good about. Yeah. Um, But yeah, I had caught up to him, so he shot a 59. And then the one guy in our card, who I guess I wasn't really paying attention to how he shot, super nice guy, love him a lot. Um, I just didn't think that he was doing that well. He shot a 57. Nice. So I was like, you're the one that won the card? Like, yeah. in my head, I was like, you won the card? <laughs> um. Super good guy. We had a great time. All four rounds I played on the weekend, I had a great time. Good. So for Hudson, I shot 50, whatever. And then a fi- I shot a 53 the first round and then a 59, 59 the second round. And yeah. it was good to tie for 16th or something. Mm-hmm. But there were 50 people there and there was a lot of like really, really good people. Yeah, it was a giant field. Giant field. Yeah. So I cashed and... um made more than it cost me to play good not by a lot but it, it's still did. more still more still, still more yeah still ended up with yeah. uh with something to the positive so after the round uh will's second round didn't go as well as he wanted it to <laughs> <laughs> so i uh i i lost a bet to him previously for a disc mm-hmm. so i he was like do you want to do some uh do you want to do some retail therapy I was like, yeah, dude, I'm down. Whatever. If that's what you want. So we went to CJ's. Then I was telling him, I was like, yeah, I was just here yesterday with Zach. And uh, I was like, well, you get your disc, you know, like whatever disc you want. And he's like, oh, I want this. And I was like, well, just so you know, it's CJ's. So the Tour Series discs at CJ's are like thirty nine ninety five or something. And then, like, yeah. you know, regular discs are like twenty four ninety five. I'm like, <laughs> so we might be able to get like a DX putter or something. Yeah. Because the cap was 20 bucks. Yeah. So he was like, all right. So then... Uh, we looked around or whatever it is. And I was like, I'm, that, I threw the Meteor three times. The one that I bought okay. the day before. I threw it three times. And it was perfect. It was exactly what I was thinking the Meteor was going to be when I got it. Mm-hmm. So I was like, all right, well, Tour, tour Series 1 will be cool. I can beat it in and then like it'll hold that forever. So mm-hmm. these other ones I can use in the meantime and whatever. So I got another Meteor. So I'd have one to like match up with that one. And, uh, and I was like, cool. And then he couldn't figure out what he wanted to get. And then they had like the... I always look at the closeouts. They have like the two little rows of closeouts yeah. by the door there. And I was like, because they're like 10 bucks or sometimes you can get a bunch of discs. Like I got a bunch of Echo Star turns back in the day for like eight bucks a piece. Gotcha. So I went to check it out and they had like torrents, the DGA torrent, which mm-hmm. I don't know anything about. But I was like, dude, have you ever thrown a torrent? Because I have them for 10 bucks. So he was like, oh, maybe I'll get two of those instead of one disc for 20. I was like, well, that's not really... <laughs> exactly what the bet was but i was like oh whatever like basically i lost a bet for 20 bucks like i was looking at it, I was like i lost a bet for 20 bucks yeah so whatever so i got one too because i was like oh, i'll fuck around with it too and see so i was looking at the angle yeah. the dome so i got like the <laughs> domiest one and i was like cool yeah. like try this out see what it's gonna do so then we just loaded up and came home um but, <laughs> but because we didn't do subway at lunch 
and uh and whatever like and we got back i don't know it was weird but like i had to go to the bathroom from when i left the house in the morning <laughs> all day <laughs> so like literally all day both yeah. rounds i was like fighting it back <laughs> why i don't know why? i didn't have time in the morning like we warmed yeah. up and stuff and all that and then all you of a sudden, had an hour at, at <clears throat> lunch when you got back but i wanted to play those holes mm. because like some like i didn't know those holes yeah. you know what i mean and like a through f i was like fuck it but i wanted to go look at like where the champ basket was and all this stuff yeah and throw you know what I mean? figure out three and whatever and i was like i'll be fine yeah it didn't turn into emergency during the round but i was gonna ask like <laughs> what happens in that situation like do I get like five minutes? Like what? Like what? Go off into the fucking woods. But that's what I'm saying. It's still yeah. gonna take time. Yeah. It's not like I'm like, you know, like yeah. I guess if somebody loses their disc, <laughs> then I just like turn and hightail it the other way. Like, see, helping to find the disc. I think it's over here, guys. Yeah. What do you, you want us to help? No, I got no, no, it. No, 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 no. It's I good. It's it. good. It's good. <laughs> A lot of stinging nettles over here. Um. But anyway, so after I dropped, I was like fine till we were like driving home. Yeah. And then we were driving home. I was like, I almost feel like I'm having a medical emergency. <laughs> so I drop Will off at Panera. Normally I like get out and hog him and like whatever. He like got his stuff. I'm like, yeah, your stuff. All right, good. Uh, and I like <laughs> drove home. I got home. I made it. Everything was fine. Um, but it's very uncomfortable. So yeah. And then I was asleep yesterday by like 1030. Yeah. Yeah. Like just the whole weekend, all that stuff and everything just kind of caught up. I mean, then I knew we were doing this in the morning working out and I wanted to have like some kind of energy and yeah, you know. <laughs> have my body be in decent shape to be able to do this so right yeah it was cool it was it was a it was a cool weekend i shot basically like i think i, I don't know but the variance of my, sh of my of all four rounds was from like 960 something to like 982 mm -hmm. i basically shot like four rounds like within you know five points one way or another like yeah. with each other and uh i thought that was pretty good for like the new form and doing all that, like to be able to go out and shoot consistent golf and have it be like, all right. Yeah. Like I, that's kind of like what I got from my round too, where it was just like it, like, I don't know, arguably a bad round or whatever, but it was real, like not dicey. I'm not like making crazy mistakes. Really. It's yeah. just like, I'm not getting myself into position for scoring. Yeah. And that's really it. Like I'm not having to scramble. I'm not having to do this, that, and the other thing. Like. Yeah, it's weird. Yeah. Yeah. Because I had like two fives at Indy, the one round. And then I had two bogeys the first round of Hudson. And then I had the like five, the six and the seven, the second round of Hudson. And then like I didn't, I only had like a couple of holes that were off. Yeah. And like most of those were mental mistakes. But like all the rest of my shots were kind of like pretty much what I was going for. Yeah. Uh, a little off. I didn't quite make the gap. And then I'll scramble up there to get it. Like right. I threw so many fucking pars over the weekend. And yeah, it was it's like, not like you're only just ripping shit off of the fairway. And then like, how do I get out of here? Right. <laughs> yeah. Really, like everything was pretty much like just do, do, like it's a lot yeah. of really boring golf. You yeah. Know? Um, yeah. So I don't know. Maybe like when I get more a little bit more comfortable with this or get a little bit more tuned in. It's a little bit different because my discs fly a little bit different. So I was trying to do less. So maybe, I don't know, maybe once I get more comfortable with this, I'll be able to like start running things a little bit harder yeah but right now it's just trying to like really get a smooth kind of approach to it and it just led to like really boring middle of the road golf yeah me too because <laughs> like <laughs> the form feels amazing like it like it feels kind of like what i've had before but even better and just like that power transfer from the really deliberate last step and then pull through versus like step pull like yeah. trying to combine those two steps is super beneficial and like i really enjoy it so trying to keep that yeah on track is yeah is key yeah right and right now <laughs> like, we're just the boring brothers yeah yeah oh the boring brothers are here yeah unless hey. it's lunchtime yeah. here's my par pal zach yeah. we're out here to throw a lot of i'm glad you were able to do the exact opposite with will for lunchtime yeah you know we didn't even get to eat yeah <laughs> <laughs> like i just ate three protein bars like i don't even know really did you at least like stack them like you pretend i had a sandwich no. or something no i just stuffed them on board and i didn't <laughs> and like, i had i had the not good ones oh so it was like three God. of like three of those and i was like, like i mm. hate you guys so much. yeah and i got i got uh. i was like i wonder how many of these i've like eaten this weekend <laughs> yeah. like just so many i hate you so much i'm gonna turn you into poo <laughs> so i came home <laughs> gabby was here so he's like, I just hit the couch. Yeah. Like, or I hit the the bed, I mean. Came home, got out of like my tournament clothes. 
obviously after going to the bathroom <laughs> and then um like i just laid down and i was like i'm probably not getting up from here like this yeah. is probably it she's like what do you want to do for dinner and i was like pizza i just want i just want to order pizza like i don't want to do anything whatever so we ordered yeah. pizza she's like should we get a small or a large and i was like get a large i was like because i can eat it tomorrow you know whatever mm-hmm. so we get a large and uh i ate a small pizza and <laughs> and four four chicken wings like i just pounded this it, I, I think i ate more than a small but whatever i ate like yeah. seven pieces of pizza square deep dish pizza <laughs> seven and then i ate four chicken wings with ranch oh my and God. i was like oh i was like good and then it was asleep like an hour later <laughs> I was like all right good got that on board feel good and then i drank like six of these last night oh my god like at a time like one i just like pound the whole thing and then just like and then i'd like get up and get two more and then like yeah. drink two of them and then so like from when i got home to when i went to sleep i drank four and then throughout the night when i'd randomly wake up i would just drink one and so i drank six of them I amazing feel, i feel great today good i feel much better i'm ready to do this i know yeah. my legs are going to be a little janky but yeah it'll be fine it'll be good it'll be a good workout <laughs> so the one thing that i wanted to to bring up though and a topic that i'd come up with um was buying and selling disc golf goods yes because i had obviously a transaction this week um which was great and mm-hmm. so I, I got the bag um but it kind of like we talked about it a little bit but it kind of brought up the like transaction interaction that happens when you're selling stuff disc golf stuff and then you're dealing with disc golf people trying to buy it and whatever it is mm-hmm. and uh so I, the bag i saw on facebook because i'm part of the bag collector group of course obviously obviously i'm a pillar of the community <laughs> yeah uh, <laughs> i told gabby because i told gabby i got a bag and she was like oh my god and i was like if i was a woman how many purses would i have she's like you'd need a whole room I yeah like, I easily i kind of need a whole room now but yeah um so the guy posted it on facebook here's this bag there's like three rounds on it it's 200 bucks that's it mm-hmm. and then like someone had posted underneath like I'll give you 210 for it if you can bring it to Kensington Leagues. <laughs> yeah. He lives by, like, he lives right by Spindler. Yeah. So that's like an hour drive. Yes. I would say. To, oh, yeah. To Kensington. Yeah. So for 10 bucks, like, I know this is what you want for the bag. Yeah. So I'll, I'll, I'll give you that. But also for $10, I want you to drive an hour, drop off the bag, and then drive an hour home. So I'll pay you $5 an hour. Minus gas, yeah, to to give me this bag so we can like make this deal happen. And no when thanks. I when I saw that that guy had posted that, and that's what that would that was the last comment on the uh, the guy was trying to work out the arrangements. Like he was trying to convince them that like bringing it to leagues would be a it's good idea. It's worth it. Yeah, yeah. And uh, when I saw that, then I just private messaged them. I didn't, I didn't even post it on the the feed or whatever. Yeah, on the post, I just messaged them and I was like, "Hey, dude, if that bag's still available, I'll give you two hundred dollars and I'll come pick it up." Yeah. He was like, sold. I was yeah. like, sweet. Right. Like, <laughs> that's it. And then he actually gave me uh, a zone with uh, with the bag. With, like, I, I got the bag and I went to go through it because I've gotten people's stuff in bags before. And then they call me and they're like, hey, I just realized X, like headphones or something like that. And then it's just a huge pain in the ass because I'm terrible about mailing out stuff. Yeah. So I was going through his bag and I was like, oh, there's a disc in here. And he's like, oh, that's for you. And I was like, oh, you don't have to do that or whatever. He's like, no, 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 no. He's like, you know. And so he does the crack and chains league at mm-hmm. Spindler or whatever. I've gone. I used to go last year like a handful of times. It's yeah. a fun league. Partners best. Um, it's a good group. And you get to play Spindler, which is yeah. a good, good time. Uh, so he gave me the disc. And I was like, oh, that's super cool of you or whatever. And then I found a quarter. And I was like, oh, there's a quarter in here. <laughs> I'm going to keep that too. <laughs> just really taking you to the cleaners here today. Uh, you didn't even ask him. I was like, hey, I found your quarter. Yeah. This is like, mine. That's obviously in there for me too. Yeah. <laughs> but uh so i was talking about the bag and he he ended up getting like the big one the octothorpe and uh we were talking about it whatever he's like yeah i'm just excited for this bag and you know this yeah. and that he goes yeah i just got the octothorpe after using that he goes i just got the octothorpe because the bag's awesome and i wanted a big one so i did that and i don't need that anymore i was like okay so i told him i was like yeah i collect bags you know yeah. whatever <laughs> and so and anyways he's like He's like, yeah, yeah like I, I saw, like I watched the podcast and whatever, and I was like, it was the first time like I had had an interaction with somebody where I was like, oh, sweet, you know, yeah. like, so you know. He's like, yeah, yeah, like, I'm well aware of your bag collection. I was like, okay, cool. <laughs> so, um, but it was awesome. Like, it was an awesome transaction on his end. It was an awesome transaction on my end. I was super pumped to get the bag. I had been looking for it. 
found it, got it, paid what I thought was a fair price for it. He was happy with like the way that it went. I literally just drove to his house, picked it up. Nothing weird. Um, cool. It was really cool. Yeah, that's awesome. Yeah. Not the interaction that I've had with other stuff. So yeah. when I've gone to, I guess when I go to buy stuff, it's it's usually pretty smooth mm-hmm. because like I just pay you what you're asking for it, right? Like I'm never like a, well, what about this? What about that? You know, um, and then I usually just try to meet up mm-hmm. and like we can play. Like I got a couple bags from the same guy and we would just go play cast. Okay. Like I just like get the bag. I, I think I, oh, I traded, <laughs> I traded bags with a guy. We met up at cast and I traded bags and then we just played around. Mm-hmm. like with the bags yeah which was pretty funny <laughs> um and and so like I, I've, I've had those interactions that are like good but i think i'm a good customer like i'm a good buyer because mm-hmm. i look at like i see the value and what it is that you're trying to sell when people post shit that i think is expensive i just don't don't try to buy it yeah that's it's it out of my price range <laughs> I, I, yeah. I think that that's totally ridiculous you yeah. know what i mean when you when you have the one that i get is grip bags because i watch bags all the time Mm-hmm. And when Grip has a sale or when they have something knocked down and then someone doesn't know that and then they're selling their used Grip bag for $40 more than I could buy a brand new one right now and their little bio is explaining like why this bag is almost new and worth like $20 less than a brand new bag. But they're not even aware of the fact that like you could actually get the brand new bag for $40 less than what you're selling your used bag for. And yep. I always want to message like, Sweet deal, bro. If you just go yeah. to Grip, you know, like yeah, <laughs> but I just, I just or don't... just post the link to the sale right. of brand new. Like... <laughs> I just don't want to do that. I just don't want to be that guy. Yeah, I want no. I want to do that. I just don't do it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. So, um, yeah. So then I just don't like whatever. Like when people post stuff, and some people post stuff, and then I just like it kind of pisses me off. Like the like I was at this tournament where they had these discs, so I bought a shit ton of them, and now I'm gonna sell them online for like way more then you could get them, you know, at yeah. the tournament because I, I was there. Yeah. Right. Um, so I just, like, then I was just want to post, be like, sweet markup, bro. Like, you know, yeah. cool. Nice. You know, <laughs> awesome. <laughs> uh, <laughs> but anyways, so when I go to sell stuff online, I know that you've sold a bunch of stuff online. Mm-hmm. Uh, when I go to sell stuff online, I actually just give it to a friend of mine, Brad Harrelick, and then I just have him sell it. And then I just give him a cut of the money. Yeah. Because I can't stand, like, I put something up online and, like, let's say, like, my first run pig, the proto pig, right? Like, mm-hmm. proto star pig. Like, put it up, like, 50 bucks. And then someone might do, like, I'll give you 30 for it. And then I just want to be, like, like, I get too involved. I get too heated. Yeah. So then it's, like, not worth it to me. So uh, yeah. I just give it to him. He sells stuff. I forget about it. And then he's, like, oh, I sold some stuff. Here's 80 bucks. And I'm, yeah. like, cool. Like, yeah, that makes sweet. sense. Right. But you're that guy for Scott. Yeah. So what is your interaction? Because you're much more involved in this than me. But I just wondered, like, what is your interaction with, like, selling stuff through? Like, do you get a lot of, like, people bitching about shipping? Or, like, like how does it go for you? That's probably my number one complaint. Because I, like you, at times, are I'm bad at just getting stuff to the post office. I have to be, like, really deliberate and on top of it. But I know when I do that. And I'll tell the person, like, hey, I'm sorry. I fucked up. I'm just going to send you like an extra disc with it just because like I I have whatever extra lying around anyways. So it doesn't really cost me anything to do that. And I want to, I want to make good. Like you, you wanted to buy this. And I also hate like if I buy something and it takes X, Y, and Z because I've also had interactions where it's just like, I know you're just bullshitting me. Just say it. I don't fucking care. But the fact that you're going through all this length of like my everybody died, like, all of a sudden yeah. and i just couldn't get to the dude whatever like if somebody did that like i'm sorry but just i don't know be truthful whatever yeah. like shit happens i get it and so i kind of I, I try to make good when i fuck up and i just be like hey i'm sorry like i messed up here's what happened or i totally forgot whatever um but when i sell stuff for scott or myself or whatever it kind of is a grind in a sense of like you have to just weed through whatever like one of the last times i tried selling something um it was this firebird and like i don't know why when somebody says yeah i want to get it this that whatever and then it like i'll follow up follow up follow up 
like a couple times like hey do you want to buy this still or what because i have it like bagged and marked like this is sold to whoever for x amount of dollars so i don't accidentally sell it to somebody else just in case when they come and like whatever and then at that point really it's like uh, whoever's just going to give me money for it you get the disc right at that point like i'm trying to be friendly whatever right but there's a lot of that too like hey i'll get you later or let's haggle the price or whatever and it's just i I'm very similar to you in the sense of like, I just get burned out of it real quick. Why can't it just be, it's this price just because of whatever. Um, if you want, but it, I'm sweet. not, but I'm also not trying to mark up this. I feel like I'm selling them for like a really reasonable price. I'm not the guy who's got all the cloud breaker twos and is like, they're $80 a piece just because Yeah. like if I had a bunch of cloud breaker twos, I'd probably put a markup on them, but like, I don't know, X percent more not a hundred percent more 200 yeah. percent more like they are um just because one like we're both getting what we want we're trying to like make a profit and we're like helping what because yeah you're not here to get the discs so there's like whatever premium and it's like i don't know five ten dollars more i guess or whatever um but yeah there's there's a weirdness strictly in the disc media market where i've joined that facebook page just to get because they have discs that i throw that i really do like like the md3 i like a lot pd2s are awesome fds are like my favorite fairway driver of all time at this point yeah and i joined in there and the first post i made made me want to just fucking rage quit that page yeah i posted in there hey i'm looking for pd2s fds and md3s I'm looking for used bin, like ten to fifteen dollar bin, whatever. Like your guy at the course who's just selling the shit that he's found, like going through swamps and whatever, no callbacks, so on and so forth. I get zero of those, but I do get people posting discs that they're trying to sell. Like this one dude, he posted six swirly S line PD twos, all used besides two. I'm like, those are sweet. Like, whatever. He didn't say, like, what he wanted for him. So, I was like, how much for, like, some used ones? I can do 30 a piece for those. Why are you talking to me? Right. Do you know how to read? Right. Seriously. Like, why? And then he's like, oh, you should see. Like, I asked him, why are they worth so much? He's like, oh, well, they're swirly and they're penned or whatever. What? <laughs> okay. What? Yeah. I don't I, explain. So, like, I, I I'm... I'm okay at being a smart ass. Yeah. I get it yeah. from my mom. Yes. Yeah. She's all very talented at it. And so like, I just, I'm kind of going back and forth with this guy and he's just not, I mean, that's fine. I know he's not understanding that I'm being a smart ass and he gives me all these excuses. I'm like, cool. I'm not buying any. Bye. Yeah. Like this is stupid. And then there's like five, six, seven other people that are doing the same thing just with like other PD twos or like the other X, Y, and Z molds. And eventually, I think it was within a couple of days, somebody else posted in um, the Discraft one. It was some chick. I don't remember her name. And she, she also was like, she was verbally like, I don't understand what the fuck is going on here. Like, why is this, 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 and this happening? Like, I just, scalping this, like, I, I just, people aren't saying like, you're basically just buying a stamp. Like, these aren't any, like, they come out different or whatever, but why are they so much money just because? Like, they're used, but they're going for double the price of what they were new. Like, yeah. it's whatever. I understand that to a degree it's because people are willing to pay those prices yes. is why. Yeah. yeah. But also why? Like, it's just it's a weird thing that it's not really going to change unless the group of people that are buying the stuff, I mean, are like, no, I'm not paying that much money to yeah. get that. But, like... To me, strictly disc or uh, disc mania, that page or like all the page, just in general, anytime buying and looking at stuff like that, it's super hard. Yeah, because it's like I at this point, I'm just buying new stuff online because yeah. it's the cheapest. Right. <laughs> like I'm not trying to whatever. So like people, I was even on there the other day. Um, it might have been yesterday or Saturday or something. I was like, I'm gonna see if anyone has any lots because people will post lots for like Innova and Discraft, and it's totally reasonable. People are like, I'll do deals on multiples. It's usually like ten to twelve a piece or whatever shipped for used stuff. There's, I don't think I've seen any of that on the Discmania page. Like deals on multiples, but still 
a right. extra premium price for whatever and they're like new run like this was ran like i don't know last week it's a 30 dollar disc for why because right. oh, it's like a nice md3 or whatever the hell it is so i get really wound up about it but i never say anything even though i want to i know it's not going to do any good yeah. like i'll make posts here and there as to like why is this zone so much like i don't understand it like oh well this zone is so much better than this other zone but but i'm asking why like oh because it's a four time and like the five times are domey and flippy okay all right um sure yeah, yeah i yeah I think whatever whatever man <laughs> i think it's funny like i've always been in the idea of like just trying to get the cheapest disc to do what i want so that way like i can get a bunch of them yeah like i don't i've never been a person of like you know like even even like the meteor right like okay cool like i need a couple of them so i can practice yeah like if i only have one of that disc like am i just gonna throw it and then run and get it and then throw it and then run and get it like i don't i don't know so i've always been kind of like in the idea of you know trying to get whatever but as i've as i've gotten better or as i've gotten better control or more consistent form or whatever like at this point i just try to get cheap yeah like i just try to get like the cheapest discs and then if they're more like because i'll get discs from play it against sports i had to play it again force yeah found out it's more yeah. broken in than i thought it was <laughs> uh which is fine um but then I, I look at like well cool now i have like a flippier force yeah and that might be sweet to play around with yeah right so um yeah i don't know like for me i i'm kind of the opposite way mm -hmm. you know what I mean? like we were joking around before about in the bag yeah like, i'm gonna do an in the bag video and be like my whole bag of this costs like 150 bucks yeah like straight up yeah with my putters definitely being the most expensive which makes the most amount of sense to yes me. yeah yes. me too yeah, and we've said it before on the podcast. Yeah. If you're gonna spend money on spend whatever, on the putters. Yes, yeah, on the putters. Oh, I almost lost. I almost lost a twenty dollar putter. Um, <laughs> <laughs> totally, and stabbed myself in the eye trying to get it. Oh god, it hurt so. Like my eyes are super sensitive. Yeah. Huge pussy about my eyes. But twelve or thirteen? No, it's thirteen. We play the champ basket. Mm -hmm. So it's again one of these like you know Heiser hole or any Heiser hole. So I throw the Avenger SS, tugged it off the tee pad mm -hmm. got through yeah dude i was like <laughs> past the original basket like parked I was okay like, this is the best drive i've ever had on this basket not what i was trying to do not i was like sweet yeah. so i literally just had like a little patent pending like anheuser like over the top of the trees putt to be right by the basket mm -hmm. and i just didn't quite get it high enough so it hit like the top of the tree like this far from the top of the pine tree and then the pine tree just grabbed it yeah. And it was stuck there. And I was still thinking, like, I could probably, I might be able to make that putt. It depends on where my foot's going to be and, like, whatever. Um, so I put my mini down through the putt. I hit, like, the top of the basket. And then I just dropped it in for the four, which on that hole is good for a four because I was playing for the four. I was hoping, like, if we're going to be honest, I was hoping for the four. Yeah. That, <laughs> that hole can blow up on me. <laughs> yeah. So I got the four and I was like, oh, man, I actually could have gotten the fucking three. Yeah. Whatever. Right. You're going to make mistakes. Yeah. But I threw a stick, hit it knocked it down like three levels of the pine tree and then like those branches literally had it in like a full nelson like yeah. the branches were like like it was Mine. so <laughs> locked up and uh so i i like shook the tree because it wasn't that big of a pine tree i shook it it wasn't moving threw my water bottle at it like four times hit it once it never moved and i was like fuck and that's like my super flippy one so it's kind of a utility disc anyways and i was like whatever it is what it is and I know I can come back and get it. It's not mm -hmm. like it's lost in some like thorns or I don't know where it is. Like I can finish the round and get it. Yeah. And then right when we we're getting ready to leave, I was like, well, maybe I'll just climb up. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so <laughs> like real quick, I can climb a tree like a wizard. Yeah. <clears throat> so I reached to grab one branch to pull myself up. And as I like went this way to reach, I just stabbed myself in the eye. Oh, with God. I was like, oh, and I was like, I'm not climbing this tree. <laughs> good, good. And uh, so I was like, well, I hope I didn't scratch my eye. Yeah. Or anything. But I didn't. It was just like watering and hurt for like three holes and then it went away it was fine no big deal we went in the, we went in the extra holes after that you know yeah you don't need your vision that well um but yeah i left it and then when we were coming out like right as we were going to monster uh doug was on the like over by the tee pad and he goes here this is yours and it was my putter i think marweed had gotten it down for me or something nice and i was like cool that's yeah. sweet i got it back now yeah. i don't have to go climb that tree at the end of yeah. the round thanks bro thanks um yeah, but yeah, so like I just try to throw like the cheap shit. Yeah, you know me I mean? too. Like, what's gonna work? 
what can I get more of at a reasonable price? And then whatever. And then I've really been on this kick of like play it against sports. Mm-hmm. Like ever since I got the $2 XL, yeah. which has been so money for me. Yes. Um, I've just been in a big kick of like getting this cheap and then figuring out where they work in the set and then playing around with them and figuring yeah. out like what I want Because sometimes do. you find shit that is just awesome and it's just totally unique. Like a slice or whatever yeah and losing it was like that sucks but i mean what are you gonna do you lose discs yeah just by playing the game and given x amount of time but throwing something that's retail price and losing it versus i don't know a 2016 sexton firebird that's could be a hundred or hundreds of dollars right and you're buying it to throw and then you lose it and then you have to go replace it you've bought two discs and you're at right. hundreds of dollars, whatever, like yeah, whatever you're, you're at, at hundreds of dollars to start or whatever. Like, I don't know. I mean, if one, if you can afford it too, and you know that that's what you're doing and you're okay with it, that's different. Right. But if you're the dude who's buying it and you think it just makes you better, I don't understand. Yeah. Like, like I, like I, it's strange. At some point collected discs. <sighs> yeah. And they were like collector discs, right? Like I still have like this, the little cabinet here. Like I have yeah. some collector discs in there that i like for whatever reason they like make me happy that mold and i'll collect them yeah and, and I, I know one of them's the Solinsky yeah, katana. katana yeah and um i have a shit ton of them yeah but i haven't bought a collector disc in forever mm-hmm. like i did that a lot when i was like working at troy like yeah. I, i'd go outside to take a cigarette break and i'm on ebay yeah. like <laughs> bidding on Solinsky katanas me and one other guy it always came down to the two of us and like he, was it always the same guy it was always the same really guy. yeah oh my god so like <laughs> we would end up like in the bidding war as the time is running out on eBay and he would win when I was like, I couldn't get outside. Yeah. So like I'm managing the floor. Right. And then like, I know, right. Like eventually I learned to like set an alarm with 10 minutes left or five minutes left or whatever. And they'd be like, I'm going to go take a smoke break. But if we had a busy dinner, I just couldn't do it. Yeah. And then I'd lose it. And I was like, I'll get you next time. Uh, so who was it? <laughs> I don't remember his name, but I know, yeah. like I knew it at the time. <laughs> yeah. And like, uh, yeah, shout out. Like, I'd love to, like, hit that guy yeah. up and be like, how many of those do you still have? Like, you know, um, but like that, I understand and I get it. And if you're yeah. like, if you're a guy and that's what you collect and maybe that's what the, the thing is um, with the people with the discs that are like, you know, like, I want to have that Cloudbreaker 2 that just came out and like, I'm going to collect those or whatever it is. Yeah. If you're collecting stuff, not yeah. like not to throw, but you're collecting, I totally understand because yeah. there's a history to it. Even if it's a brand new disc, yeah. it's going to have a history at some point in time. Right. And like, it, I get that. And it's cool to look at that box. Yeah. And you just have like the people with buzzes. Yeah. And they'll like put up their, here's my hive. Yeah. And they have this box of like 85 bagged buzzes. Yeah. And I'm like, yeah, that's cool. Like I yes. could look at that and be like, that would make me happy every time I looked at it. Yeah, totally. Cool. I have like a, mishmash of whatever right. but really it's like i just like throwing discs there's discs that i've thrown in the past where it's like i got it to throw and then looking back is like it would have just been cooler to keep it keep it yeah, yeah. i remember specifically one time i played a tournament a mike Mahalik tournament in ohio and it was actually a really cool setup it was an old nine hole ball golf course converted into like a half-ass fountain hills type thing yeah. and it was actually a really cool thing so there was water along um the one side of the park and so nine a hole nine of the holes were over there <laughs> some of them were probably really dicey because some were literally five ten feet from the water or whatever yeah um i threw in a yellow something boss no mike rabin threw in a yellow boss and i was like i don't know sometimes i'm a wizard with a stick and fishing discs out of water and so I get this disc out. It's it's a yellow disc. It's not a boss. It's a CE Valkyrie. Yeah. And it's from someone who wasn't there, I guess, or like they were already gone. And the name that was on there was a signature and a PDGA number. So I looked up the dude on PDGA. He wasn't current. I couldn't. He wasn't on the scene or whatever the hell. So I was like, I try. I don't know what more you want me to do. Yeah. So I knew Bauman. I already had something lined up. Bauman might have something sweet. <laughs> and he threw like this shitty green colored Valkyrie for rollers and he was really good with it. I was like, he'll probably want this. So I message him, whatever. And he's like, yeah, I want it. He's like, I got something for you. I was like, all right, sweet. <laughs> Show up at river bends. Here's the Valkyrie. He hands me a brand new, never been thrown like a milky white CE Eagle heavy. 
brand new. Yeah. Wish I would have just kept it brand new because that would have been fucking sweet to just have. Right. But my mindset at the time was like discs are meant to be thrown. Yes. And like I really liked Eagles. It felt really fucking awesome. Whatever. Just thrown it, marked it up, all that good stuff. I either traded it to Jared or whatever. Like I don't own it anymore or anything like yeah. that. But having stuff like that, Scott has a collection of stuff that is just really cool. Yeah. So if someone were to like buy it, like even if it was his whatever it's like you're just going to keep this right like not buying it as a throw or whatever because like there's history to this type of stuff like, yeah scott has holy grail buzz i know i've told you before about it but like within like the first 10 buzzes literally ever made he's got one of those for sure yeah and like in the buzz market it's whatever you want it to be worth yeah if he wants to sell it for 10 grand or something if somebody really wants it yeah. they'll buy it like it's just like it's kind of that collector's market but if you're gonna buy it and be like i need to throw it because it's gonna make me so good it's like no like that's not that's not the reason yeah last year i took a, <laughs> i took a handful of rogues out of my collection yeah and that was hard to do they're not yeah. worth shit yeah but for me like the 2008 world ones with the like uh, oberon the old oberon yeah. stamp yeah it was like my favorite disc like, it, like, I love the stamp. I love the disc. Like, it means a lot to me or whatever. So I went into, like, the Rogue collection, which no one else has, but yeah. whatever. And I was, like, <laughs> thumbing through. And I had a really hard time. And I remember, like, pulling it out. And I pulled out, like, three Rogues. And I was, like, yeah, I'm going to throw this. Like, I'm going to put this in. This is going to be, like, something that, like, during the round, I can get, like, a little emotional boost. Mm -hmm. So, like, if things are going shitty, I can throw the Rogue. Yeah. And it'll just take me back to when I first started learning how to play forehand and my or backhand and my first ace and like all that. And it's in the bag for that reason. Yeah. And I did it for the first time ever the year before with a Valkyrie. Because I used to like when the Valkyrie came out, like, you know, throw the Valkyrie. That was like the big the disc. Everybody yeah. threw the Valkyrie. So the year before I had done that with Valkyries, like I put a couple of Valkyries in my bag and I was like, this is gonna be the spirit animal in my bag. Like, yeah. If things are going shitty, I can always take myself back to like throwing the Valkyrie, mm -hmm. you know, and like do that and I, and I like doing that um <clears throat> but it was hard the first time i threw it yeah I'd, I'd owned that disc for like four five six years seven years something like that mm -hmm. before i threw it and then i remember like going to river bends and i'm like was it brand new yeah 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 i still have like three <laughs> yeah but still i was like oh god i'm gonna throw this and i was like here we go and i threw it and i remember like once i threw it once i was like well that's it and it flies pretty good it's in my bag right now like mm. I, I use it, you know, gotcha. and uh, sometimes it works, sometimes it doesn't. But yeah, I don't know. I mean, like I understand like people collecting stuff and all that. And then in terms of like, I still don't understand the 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 haggling and the fucking around with buying it from someone though. You know, like I just I just don't get it. Like yeah. if you post it and you want eighty five dollars for whatever it is, cool. Mm -hmm. Like I wonder how many people are like, I want eighty five dollars for this, and then they sell it for sixty. Yeah. I don't know. Like, like, is there a lot of success? Like, are there people out there that like have a lot of success? Like, just constantly watching and combing through Facebook to lowball people. Yeah. Or like, I know. Maybe, I mean, I wouldn't be surprised. That's what I'm saying. I wonder. Yeah. I wonder if there's like some dude somewhere that like that's his shit. Yeah, probably. You know, because when it comes to me, like, if something's just so far out of my price range, and it, like from what you're wanting, it's like you want this. That's fine. I get it. Yeah. I, I will not even like tell you what i would be willing to offer you for because of what i'm looking to do and the price that i think is viable for something like that because if i were to spend 85 dollars on a disc uh which i have shazan yeah <laughs> was i don't know like i went through a phase of first run gators i mean the plastic was amazing and the gators for sure at the time were like dog shit feeling like just the plastic was so bad and justifying doing that like i don't i went like to one end of the spectrum of like let's just go crazy expensive or whatever yeah. and then it was i'm not really throwing this on lines that i'm gonna lose it right. really or whatever and uh one of the only first runs that i have seen that were clear he had and this was probably like the sixth one like i had five of them uh from him previously and at addison i was just like let me see that gator like let's see how it flies i've thrown that disc one time till this day and it's just because I fucking aced with it is why I own it. Yeah. And then it was just like, well, I guess I have to buy it because it's an ace disc and whatever. Yeah. And he's like, just give me what I paid for it and we're good. Yeah. So like no profit, no whatever. I was like, all right, sweet. 
fine. Still like 80 whatever dollars or whatever. It right. might have been like 100. I don't know. Um, and then I eventually sold off all the rest because I realized like I, I have within five discs right here, I have so much money. Right. And it's not like they're new or whatever. So like it being collectory, it's like not really. Having a collection of used whatever is like kind of cool. Yeah. But like if they're all new, it's like that's fucking sweet. Baller. Yeah. Like, yeah. Um, Ransley has a collection on uh, disc golf scene. Like, I don't know if he does it still or not. I'm not on the scene like how I used to be, but he would post <laughs> like pictures of stuff that he buys. And it's not like one or two discs at a time. It's like double digits at a time. Yeah. And he'll put them all in whatever. And I remember one time he put up some like 11 time Casey uh, T-Birds and it was like 20 of them. And they were like 60% of them were brand new. And it was like, how the fuck? Like what? Like, at that time, there was still also like 30, 40, maybe $50, depending on color or whatever. Yeah. <laughs> it's just like, yeah, I just, I find this and I love them. And I just go buy a bunch of them. I was like, all right, cool. I mean, that makes sense. I mean, he makes the money to be able to do it, yeah. obviously, and whatever. But I'd be interested to see what his collection looks like still. Yeah. Because he's not a guy who just gets rid of stuff. I don't know if I've ever seen him sell any discs. Right. He only buys. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. But I for sure do try to haggle with something like if it's close to what I'm looking for. And it's probably the difference of like five or ten bucks. And I try to like make it worth the time. Like if they have a lot of discs and it's right. like, what if we just did X, Y and Z for this price or something? Yeah. And just see because maybe it's a little higher than I wanted, but I'm buying more from you. So you're going to have more money. I get more discs. Yeah. So Let's what see. I what I did before is just like straight to manufacture. Yeah. Right. Like when I did my shit, however many years ago, and then I was like, I'm going to try out these. I'm going to try out those. And then eventually it was like, I'm just going to contact the manufacturer. Yeah. How many do I need to buy from you to be able to buy from you? Yeah. You know, and like <clears throat> for Prodiscus, because they're shipping from Finland, like I had to buy 36 the first time. And, okay. I, was like, and I was like, bet, dude, I got, I yeah. got you. Okay. Like, let's do that. And then it was cool because I just get like shipments from fucking Finland. Yeah. And like even that, like landed on the ground on my end they were like 1350 a piece okay right That's i just not it, bad it just took all. It, like sometimes it's weird though because of customs because sometimes it would take three weeks and sometimes like when they came out with the basic like stiff sparta mm -hmm. i wanted them for amnats yeah and amnats was like 10 days away <sighs> and i was like i want these so i have a couple days to practice dude they were at my house in six days really from finland he sent me eight of them and i was like fucking sweet man wow you know um i had a thing from axiom mvp years ago same thing like mm -hmm. how many do i have to buy i had to buy two dozen i was like all right cool i got that okay right and then i went in with someone else and like whatever and then when they came in they were trying to take the discount on their discs the last time we ever, I ever bought this with this person in my life but like i ordered two dozen they ordered two dozen and then for some reason like my two dozen were retail Okay. But then their two dozen were like something else. And I was like, wait a minute. Like, this doesn't make sense. I thought sense. we were going to split it. And they're like, well, these did. And I was just like, yeah, no, that totally doesn't make any sense to me at all. Like, yeah. the whole point of going through the manufacturer is so that I'm not like paying you. Like, why am I paying you? Yeah. Like, I'm yeah. the one that. I'm the uh, one yeah. That, if I knew this was going to happen, I would have just bought all these myself. Yeah. I would have just yeah. gone through the. Yeah. So, yeah. so whatever. So that's what that was like my solution is like because I just want throwers. Yeah. And like, I did that with Prodigy. Yeah. Like, I bought d2s i bought 20 i think it was just 20 d2s and they're all like factory seconds and I, i've done this before with another buddy of mine who had an account yeah and the only risk that you have to go through with is like sometimes you just get shit colors yeah like literally <laughs> like baby poop smear yeah. whatever we colors saw, we saw some of those at cj's yeah. yeah and uh here's a nuke that you're never gonna find yeah it's 20 bucks yeah, yeah. and uh and then the only other thing is like the shape of them sometimes you just get ones that are just I will literally mm. never throw this. Yeah. yeah. So I got those 20. Five of them were crap. Like the colors were good, but the shape was terrible. <laughs> but then, oh, you really you ripped on that one. You good? <laughs> Need a drink? <laughs> Woo. <coughs> Pee break. <laughs> oh. It's like you just snorted some pre-workout. <laughs> what happened? Too big? Yeah. 
No. Oh. Wrong hole. Oh. <laughs> no, I'm not sure what happened. Oh, man. Oh. Like, right when it hit my mouth. <laughs> my throat was like, no. Oh, God. Oh, okay. Woo. <laughs> Woo. Sometimes there's crying on the podcast. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, anyway, hey, you do you. I'll talk still. <laughs> So I got these 20 D2s. And I just get so emotional about Prodigy. <laughs> I know. <laughs> so, <clears throat> very low risk yeah. in, in buying these Yeah. from past experiences. So I was like, dude, I, and for 20 of them, it was 120 no, $144 shipped. It was like 120 <laughs> before shipping. And, yeah. Uh, they show up like within the same week. I open like I get home. I didn't expect it. It's like, oh shit, like I got a package and this prodigy is like, oh sweet, they're all here. Yeah. Super excited to see, like, make sure that I get some sweet ones. Um and all of them besides five were good. Yeah. And there was two that were shaped really good, but they're terrible. They're black or like smoke color, right. whatever the hell. Like, uh, maybe they'll get thrown at some point. But for a hundred and forty five dollars, I have like an arsenal of like bomber discs right. of like kind of go tos, and then the only other one I want is like PD twos for like for sure fighters, and then go from there. So doing that, I wish that I had more prodigy stuff in my bag that I threw because like the mid ranges are kind of weird to me. Yeah, putters like I I have a stack of warlocks now. Like I have these six now, and then I already had another twenty. <laughs> so I'm I'm good on putters for right. sure. Um, and then. Like, the only other thing is probably, I don't know, like, going to Discraft for buzzes or something like that. I mean, they're pretty consistent. And then I was trying to talk to Disc Mini about kind of doing the same thing. Like, how many do I need to get to make the like make it worthwhile instead of, like, paying full retail? And they're hard to get in touch with or whatever. But also, they're, like, their community is everyone. Everything is a collector disc. No yeah. matter if it's stock, new, this, that, whatever. So... I'm trying to do the same thing with that because more discs, more practice, more backups, less worry about if I lose something, replacing it, I've already got something for it. Right. Not like I have to try to find one. I have to go buy one and then wait for shipping. And now I'm playing without it or whatever. So, yeah. <laughs> I watched, uh, in, in transition, I watched uh, some skins, some skins this week, this week mm -hmm. um, with Hames. Uh, Presnell, um, Hames or Hamas? Hamas. Yes. Yeah, I like I, Hammies. I would say Hames. Um, cause there's Corey Hames when I was a kid, whatever. It doesn't matter. It's like whatever. Corey's. Yeah. It's a, it's an old man thing. Okay. So, uh, yeah. And then like Drew Gibson and, uh, Barella. Okay. And the funniest thing out of the whole. Oh, is this the Ledgestone one? <laughs> yeah. Or, okay. Have you watched it? No, I was, I saw them doing the last couple holes live when they went into overtime. Yeah. Yeah. The funniest thing is the intro. They have Barella on a swing. Yeah. And he's like throwing a disc on a swing. Really? Yeah. <laughs> but he's already like the youngest guy. You know what I mean? Like, why would yeah. you ever let them film you like on a swing? He just looks like this big little kid. He's like, yeah. I was thinking I was laughing. I was like, oh my God. That's awesome. But um, yeah, it's, it's, my, it's mildly entertaining. It's, well, it's, it's entertaining. Yeah. Because like Drew Gibson just talks tons of shit. Oh, yeah. Yeah, and Hamas gets like... I don't know if they're just joking around and they're buddies because I think they are buddies, but like... Yeah, I, yeah. I'm pretty sure they are because I... When I was up... I was waiting for them to finish so I could start practicing Northwoods Gold. Yeah. And uh, Presnell in overtime threw his shot and as he's like planted, Drew's like... he loudest goose noise ever yeah. and then Fresno still parks the hole he's like i literally can't do anything just to fuck you up yeah yeah they were like <laughs> yeah they were like yelling as they were like putting and yeah. stuff and then like <laughs> barella's like hitting the basket with something yeah. and all that and uh yeah i thought that, that i thought that, that was really cool I yeah like, i like that like we were saying before like i think the more you can bring out people's personalities and all that stuff like maybe the skins is, is one way to do it but yeah yeah I, li I liked watching that. We used to play rounds back in the day where there was no rules yeah. of etiquette. So you could yell as people were throwing and, yeah. and all of that. Uh, and that was a Could you of... punch them? No, you, there was no contact. But oh, you, okay. you could run at them. 
Okay. So like as they were getting the throw, you like run at them through their peripherals, which was always a hit. <laughs> yeah. But I had heard of that. Um, but we did that, and then I played a, a tournament last year, and this guy told me that they had a uh, uh, they would play. Uh, it was like a league, I guess, but they would play kind of consistently. Okay. And you got like so many snap pops, those little things that you throw down, and oh, like a, yeah. it's like a cap. Yes. Pop. So yes. you got so many of those to for the round. Like everybody got ten or eighteen or whatever it was, and then you could use them whenever you wanted during the round. Gotcha. So he said, so once someone starts pulling away, then everybody's just like gunning them at the tee pad <laughs> as they're teeing off, or like you know, like yeah. hitting them in the back and stuff. <laughs> and, you know, that was a pretty sweet idea. Like throwing yeah. them at the tree next to them as they're trying to pot. You yeah. know. So I was like, oh, that's fucking cool. I got to try that out. Yeah. I never even thought that's a good one. I thought it was a great yeah. idea. Yeah. Like, Those that's... things are like perfect for it. Yep. Yeah. Yep. I was like, that would be sweet. Mm. Dude, mm-hmm. I might have to get like a little pack. And then the next time I'm somewhere and I see the skin, <laughs> just like here. I'm not in the skins, but <laughs> yeah. try this out. Take, this, take <laughs> yeah. these guys. <laughs> but uh, yeah, we were talking. So we're both on Small City Disc Golf, right? Yeah. On the team. And uh, I'm the captain. It's not yeah. a big deal. It's not. I got this armband for myself. <laughs> I, I got and it. you never wear it? I got it. Oh, I've worn it. Okay. I, I got it. Uh, actually, the first doubles tournament I ever played when I played with Hughes at the Turkey Turkey Open or mm-hmm. whatever it was. And I got it because we were a team. And I just wanted him to know that like <laughs> I'm the captain. So I went ahead of time and I got it, which I thought was hilarious. That's but, amazing. Uh, yes, yeah, so I'm the captain of the team this year, which has been cool. Yeah. So... Anyways, uh, we were talking about doing a, Will and I, as we were driving home, we're talking about doing a thing of like having teams and doing an outing. Mm -hmm. So I'd come up with the idea of like, there's 12 dudes on the team that still play. Yeah. Right. Like Slater doesn't really play very much. Right. And then three other guys live out of state and whatever it is. So we were thinking about coming up with three four man teams. Mm -hmm. And then out of your four man team, you make two doubles teams. And it's the score of both of your teams. Okay. At whatever course. We'd have to figure out whatever course and do it. And I thought that that would be really cool. But maybe we could do that with the doubles. Mm. Snap pops, unlimited rules. Yeah. You know what I mean? Ra- no contact. That's razzing. the only rule. N- yeah. No contact. And you can't hit anything that would impact their shot. Okay. But I think that might be the shit. That'd be sweet. Especially for doubles. Because it's yeah. like a little bit less. You know what I mean? Yeah. And... uh yeah, I think that that might be that might be fun as fuck. I'm down. Yeah, I think that'd, that'd be super be cool. Yeah, so you'd have like three captains, and then each captain drafts three guys. Mm-hmm. So you end up with your team of four, and then depending on what course you're going to play, obviously you want to make each team. You want to try to make your two teams as equal as possible because mm-hmm. it's going to kind of be, you know, yeah. however both of your teams shoot. Yeah, which would be because if you have a couple studs and then a couple duds. <laughs> yeah. Like, like your couple studs you shoot 10 down and then the other team shoots 10 over yeah and and yeah. really like the two studs like how much better are you making each other anyways right like if i can throw a 410 foot hyzer and you can throw a 460 foot hyzer yeah how often is it gonna, <laughs> like you know i yeah. like i don't know so it's more of like if one person's decent at turnovers or has a forehand and one person doesn't like you're gonna want to team them up you know what i mean like i like i like the fact that like your team is more than just you and your partner. Yeah. And then you're trying to like, str- like strategize like how, how you can go yeah. about like doing That's actually it. a cool idea. I like that. Yeah. So we could go uh, play Hudson or something. Like you'd have to play like a hard course. Yeah. Like I think yeah. Hudson would be sweet. Yeah. I think it'd be a huge waste of time to go through a draft and you know, Rob's going to go nuts yeah. and set up like an entire statistical analysis for how the scoring of the rounds should be and everything. Yeah. Rob, if you're hearing that, or I'm sorry, not if you're hearing when, when you hear this. Yeah. Just just start putting it together. Yeah. Just start spitballing it, whatever. Yeah. Whatever makes sense figure to you. Figure out captains. Figure out the draft. Yeah. Dude, um, I love Rob. Yeah, I haven't I seen love, Rob in Rob. forever. <laughs> One of the best humans going. Yeah. But I think, you know, like as the fall goes, because like tournament season for me, I'm not even like the only other tournament I'm doing because I'm sponsoring it is uh, Stony Creek Open. Mm-hmm. Um, and besides that, like the triple threat, three time defending, undisputed. Uh, yeah, both. <laughs> <laughs> um but no so those are the only things that i really have on the horizon i might look up and try to play a couple more tournaments um if i can i'm really not that worried about it because yeah. like I, f- I figured out what i wanted to figure out for the year and now it's just like cementing that in and getting more and more like pulling through it i figured out my yeah. forehand 
Good. More uh, reps. Yeah. More reps of the right. Like, thing. yeah, do I think, like, if I played a tournament next weekend, what would I expect? I would expect to throw right around my rating and play boring golf. Mm-hmm. Like, I don't have any question in my mind between now and next week, whatever I can put into it, I'm going to yield slightly better results than this week. Yeah. So if I can play, like, you know, if I can do more field work, do more practice, do everything and kind of get it together, I think that that would be more beneficial and then play a tournament in like a month and see what happens. But we're already almost to September. Yeah. So, you know, tomorrow's September. Yeah. So how much more is there? I don't know. Right. Um, but yeah, I think that that'd be super cool to have that and it'd be fun. And yeah. Like get all, all ordered from Amazon, like a, whatever, a pallet of snap pops. And yeah. You can just do it. Yeah. And I think that that'd be super cool. That'd be awesome. Yep. I have to take a pee break. All right. Pee break. Bye. <laughs> right as I inhaled my throat, like I had gotten it in my mouth and then like I had to cough. Mm-hmm. We're at two hours. Okay. So I think a couple more thingies, and then what do we do? A couple more thingies, maybe a word consult. Yeah, you know. I'm not a thingy scientist. It's so weird to be pumped about these being blank, but I'm real pumped about these. And we're back. And we're back. Yeah. So <laughs> you job. you got some blank warlocks. From, yeah. From Tiger, because she went to Gateway, and so she got you hooked up with some blank warlocks. Yeah. She is sponsored by Gateway. Can I see one? Like I, I picked these up for you, but I didn't really feel them. Yeah. Yes. They feel good. So super nice. My like go-to putter is pure white warlocks, and pure white just because they're stiff putters. Yeah. So. I had one set. I think, th- I think those feel amazing. Yeah. Like, they're, like, not... They feel awesome. They're almost perfect. Yeah. yeah. They're, like, they're tacky and stiff and stiff all that. Stiff enough, all... but not, like, some of the wizards that I have. Yeah. <laughs> that aren't... I'm not even sure if they're <laughs> that legal. That might be illegal. Yeah. Um, but, yeah, I used to put with, uh, like, the McPro AVRs or whatever. Yeah. Just because I like the feel of them. I like harder putters putting with, like, floppy nonsense doesn't doesn't work for me i had the debate with you for years yeah. and then i finally had to give in and be like zach's right uh, <laughs> but I, I mean really it's like down to preference but yeah. I, mean, I mean i think across the board at least at the elite level like everyone's using stiffer putters or right. whatever for whatever their reason is um and then my buddy fred was telling me about like pure white wizards maybe i should just try warlocks because they're basically avrs and they are basically just avrs yeah um and like a more consistent feel like as long as everything's being ran how it's being ran because he uses random plastics or whatever it is i don't know if he still does it that way or not but every time i've picked up like a pure white or a firm it is that like it is just a stiff putter and more times than not it just feels great so she made a post on facebook while i was at ledgestone if like hey is anyone looking for gateway stuff because i'm gonna be at the factory i messaged her it's like hey see if you can get some blank ones because to me, sometimes they're distracting or whatever it is. Yeah, and blank so. blank discs, I always think are just baller. Yeah. Because then I have all the room to customize it the way I want to. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> you put exactly. my Darren stamp on Yeah, exactly. So I told her, it's like, hey, if you can get like blank ones or something, if that's possible, do that. She's like, yeah, totally. I'm like, yeah. okay, it's just that easy. Yeah. Because yeah. they sent them to me uh, one time before. And Dan also, he was like in a phase of Warlocks. He started putting with p2s he found a pair that he really liked yeah um but we both ordered like the 10 pack for 80 dollars or whatever it was took him like eons to get his and then they all felt like crap like they were all they weren't even pure white they were like ivory and like weird like i don't know china e feeling like yeah. <laughs> made in china um and when i ordered mine it took three days or something from like order to I have them. Yeah. And they felt amazing. They weren't ivory. They were pure white, <laughs> but also like the majority of them were blank. It's <laughs> just like, Sweet. I'm sorry, Dan. <laughs> Tough luck, buddy. But yeah. So, I mean, 
I, I I have putters now that I really enjoy. Yeah. I do really well with them, I feel like. And Yeah, you putt well yeah. with them. Yeah. And yeah. then I got some mitten bags. Yeah. Sam Sam hooked a it up. A couple of them. A <laughs> couple of them. And and so you yeah. got some uh I can see two of them look a little bit different. So you got the you got the climbers chalk in yeah. the mitten bag. Yeah. So what is it? All of them besides two are the regular ones, and then the two of them are climbers chalk just to try them out. And then at the, she gave extra ones to me just because when she ordered the fabric, they sent it to her like in an upside down pattern. I was like, I don't really care. And she's like, well, I already ordered whatever. So I'll just, I'll make you what you wanted. And then you'll just have some extra. Yeah. And I tried getting um, some bigger ones. Like Bino's got like <laughs> the size of my hand one. So yeah. in his thing, <laughs> it looks giant. Yeah. Um, And I thought that'd be sweet. She's like, yeah, I could do it. And then she texts me back uh i forget her husband's name he's jeff. like yeah jeff jeff already cut it or whatever so i can't i'm sorry whatever yeah that's fine i'm just like stoked to get it i think the color's amazing the pattern's awesome yeah and it's very, it's very you yeah yeah so i'm excited to try them out yeah so we'll she see. was she was impressed that i still have the ones that i have she's like yeah. i haven't seen the stupid pattern in a long time i was like yeah i got them from you last yeah. year at d glow yeah but i have an intricate system so i don't lose them because yeah. <laughs> Previously, <laughs> I bought them, bought a pair, lost them, bought a pair, lost them. Yeah. And then when I got to Deagolo to get those from her, like I specifically went up there to meet up with her and get them. Yeah. And I was like, yeah, I'll just pick them up from you. And then when I got them, I was like, I'm not losing these. Yeah. So now I have the carabiners. Dead, a sure fire away. The yeah. <laughs> the zip, 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 zip. <laughs> uh, so I don't, I don't lose them. Yeah. Um, yeah. But I, I, I like them. I'm interested to see how the ones with the climbing chalk work out. Yeah. Uh, if that if that does work well, I'm gonna get a giant one, yeah. <laughs> like as big as my face. As big as <laughs> I'm gonna have to have another bag just to carry the mitten bag. Like I have a backpack that I just Dude, wear. Dude, you could have it in your left hand and just pop. I'm good. I'm good. Yes. I'm ready. Stand back, guys. Yes. I need a permit to carry it. Yeah, yeah. It'll be amazing. Yeah, I think it'll it'll be great. But um, I was gonna say one other thing. When I was watching the skins game, uh-huh. skins match, whatever. Um, I caught something that I had never seen before. And then I told Will about it uh, yesterday. And I was just interested to see your thoughts on it because in a lot of the stuff, you're a lot more knowledgeable than I am. I'm going to try to kill myself again real quick. Don't do that. It's not worth it, buddy. Right. I'm good. Nice. So he had, um, let me see. One of these? Yeah. So he's got his whale sack because he uses the whale sack, right? Yes. So he's got his whale sack in his hand. And as he was lining up for his shot, he didn't have his disc in his hand. Mm-hmm. He was lining his hand up, and then he was doing like his shot, like he's going to do it for his forehand, and then he put the disc in his hand. That does feel great. Yeah. So, <laughs> um, but I was interested in how he loads up his shot, and then after who, I... Who is it we're talking about? Hamas. Hamas, okay. So after I saw him do it, then I was watching, and Barella does it, and then... I've watched some other stuff and like I've seen other people do it now and I just never saw it before. Which is what they... So when I throw... Oh, God. Can you hand me... Just hand me that surge. It's, it's flippy. So, I just got to, so when I come back from my forehand... First of all, I've only like really been throwing forehand well for like a week. So I'm <laughs> in... Like literally. So I'm in no way near an expert and I do the little... Yeah. Eulabari to get it going. But it helps me then like focus on like really like pushing it through when I do it. Yes. But when I load up, as I'm coming back with my hand, as I get here, I load up my wrist and then I come forward mm-hmm. and then I throw it. Yeah. Right. Okay. So my full load up is right here. Yes. Yes. Okay. So they, when they're doing their practice shots, have it like all wound up all here. Mm. So when they're coming through, it's like a full like... It's got a whole nother, like their hand is almost coming from here all the way, like from here all the way down and round, Mm -hmm. right? So it's like cocked beyond and then like swinging through it, where mine's just this. Yeah. But theirs is like this whole other added part to the top of like how their hand is actually like coming through on so much more movement on their hand. Mm -hmm. I don't know. Um have you ever noticed that before? Do yeah. You, do you do that? I, don't I know. also do that. And I've I've done it both ways in a way where it's like where I, I line up and then I kind of come backwards and I get to here and I'm coming through flat. Yeah. Or I start here and I like 
bring it up to here and come through. Yeah. Um, and I know Stokely, who's got, I don't know, a good sidearm. A dumb <laughs> yeah. sidearm, yeah. Yes. And one of the things that I know he teaches is that whichever one it is, you got to do that. Like, just reaching straight back is just weird because you don't want to be fully reach back like you do in a backhand because it's right. kind of different mechanics, different parts of your body that you're using for something like this. So getting more into the disc is actually you're staying more compact and getting more wound up into here. But the trick is when you're coming down, you're not like coming down and around and up, but you get down to a right. flat and spot and then you st- go straight. Right. Yeah. Um, I definitely feel a difference when I've tried going straight back and then straight through yeah. versus being up here and just really getting into it. Um, but I know I lack in it because my mobility here, I can't get like the pitcher's elbow that like crazy people can get like yeah. Eagle, Eagle and um, even Austin. I don't think you've ever met Austin. Um, they both get their elbow. Like it's a, in front of their chest and the disc is still here and then get that extra like, <laughs> my arm just needs to go somewhere otherwise it's going to break yeah um but i think their mobility is really good i would imagine if you're able to slow it down and see but i think it's because they're trying to stay really compact and they're really good at controlling when they're up here and staying fully loaded and then getting here being flat and just coming straight through yeah versus like someone reaching straight back and straight through i think is weird but i don't know for certain i just know from my experience like i get more by doing from up here or like coming low to high and then loading into it versus yeah. straight back straight through. Yeah. Just in my experience. So yeah, I'm interested to play around with that. <clears throat> yeah. Cause it makes a lot of sense to me though. Like, because I see people when they let go, even Skylar, when Skylar throw like a huge, like you're just like, what the fuck just happened forehand? And it like just his yeah. hand on the backside is here. Yeah. And I never understood, like, why is your hand like this? And I watch the guys on TV, and when they throw, like, their hand finishes, like, up here. Or, yeah. like, their pinky's kind of pointing, like, over that way. Yeah. And I'm like, when I come through, right, and then I release, like, my hand is here. Yeah. Not here. So I never understood, like, this. Why is this? Why isn't it this? I don't know. So it's, I think when you're coming up here, and then you're coming through, your hand is naturally on this like because you're curling all the way from here and around instead of just this, mm-hmm. you're getting like this whole thing. So then your hand finishes here as yeah. opposed to this. Yeah. So I was really interested if, if I don't know. I'll have something... to watch and see because I haven't watched the skins match yet. Yeah. Well, just yeah. Uh, like now I'd think anytime yeah. like he's not just doing that for the skins match. Well, so, yeah, I know. But yeah. I'm saying like if they're all doing it, I already have all the like here's where all the thing I'm talking about. I'm yeah. just going to go watch that. Yeah. Because I'd be interested but. to see then like watching other people throw forehands during the round. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like. Yeah, because Colings I know is different. Colin, where his Colings hand is, is like his own thing. down. Yeah, but he's also got a great like distance and touch sidearm or yeah. whatever to the point of like Colinging was a thing. Yeah, which is like you're throwing a sidearm on an obviously backhand righty backhand shot or whatever. Yeah, um, and I know mine. I used to finish totally different too versus what I am now, and it was like. I modeled it after Ziggy for a while because he had a really good sidearm that made sense to me. And mine was like on the struggle bus again. And I would start high. But when I came through and I snapped, I actually my hand was just like down. Yeah. It was super weird. And I remember like explaining to people it up in the air when they had a tarp set up and we could throw into it that that's just what I did. I wasn't like, you should do this too. But like, here's how this works for me and whatever. And I've tried like replicating it just to see. And it's like, dude, it's all bad. Yeah. <laughs> every time i do it that way it's like yeah i'm not gonna keep doing this like, yeah it's just that's how my form was then and it worked out okay i think my sidearm is better now than it was then distance wise control wise and all that yeah so i don't know yeah i don't know i'm interested to try it out and see take take some stuff i'm yeah. also interested to try out like now that i feel more comfortable in this like going to a wide open field mm-hmm. and just like ripping shit and just seeing like where it goes yeah like not worrying about like trying to hit a line not worrying about trying to do this or whatever like going to some like really big open field and just put everything i got in it if i grip lock it i grip lock it or whatever because i just got to have like this mental breakthrough of like really pulling through as hard as i can not running and doing all this but like in that framework then when i get back there like fully reaching and then just 
not leading with my head, just slinging it and just seeing where it goes. Yeah. Because I feel like in my like walk through when I'm getting ready to throw the disc, like I really feel the power into my hand. Yeah. And then when I actually go to throw the disc, I don't feel that same power. Right. Because I'm like somehow like holding up because I'm worried about where it's yeah. going to go. Yeah, for sure. I know that one of the things is, and I know I've said it to you multiple times now, is like throwing high speed versus throwing mid or putter yeah. is different. And I know that there's, I get timid throwing a faster disc, like fairway or distance driver. For some reason, oh, I don't want it to go too far and lose it or something. Yeah, it's like something it's, weird. Yeah. Yeah, it's like you worrying about your knee exploding yeah. when you have those trees underneath you yeah <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah but mine's like legitimately like i don't want it to like go too far or whatever and so like i know that i can throw a putter mid-range somewhere and it's like well i can't lose it it's not going to go too far like it might but it's not going to scream past it or whatever and right. just be gone versus a high speed whatever i get weird about it at the end like in the pull through i like i even did it um what was it i think it was hole five at Indy where it was just like, I felt like my arm start straight come here. And then my arm was like, no, I don't really want to do this, but I'm doing it anyways. And I like rip it over to the right and it starts flat. And when I finished, my hand was like this at the end, like somewhere like that. I was like, that's, I mean, very not correct. Yeah. But it's, I need to not be scared of like losing discs, whether like I mess it up or not or whatever, yeah, because by doing what I'm doing anyways, I'm going to lose discs probably more. faster. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I don't know what it is because it's the same thing with me. Like, definitely, like, I don't throw a putter as a driver for any kind of distance. But when I went to the park, I told you, like, last week, the one day I just went and threw, like, a handful of putters. Um, and, like, they ripped out of my hand. Yeah. And I was like, I don't get that when I'm playing around. And the only time I do get it recently is mids. mids. Like, once I told you, like, oh, I can throw a mid 350. Like, yeah. before I couldn't and whatever. And then now I could probably even throw it a little bit farther. But, like, I rip a mid. Like, mm -hmm. when I go to throw a mid, like, maybe it's because I'm throwing discraft and, like, all the discraft people end up throwing, like, driving with mids, which I never understood. Yeah. But, like, maybe that's just what happened. Maybe it's something in their plastic. Maybe it's that sludgy stuff that comes out of the oh, old Elite Z. Yeah. Maybe that is what it, that is. But, um, no, I, I like, I drove with a, with a mid quite a bit this mm -hmm. weekend. I mean, Hudson kind of sets up for that. But um, my confidence with it is high. And my confidence of, like, when I fucking tear everything into this disc, it's going to go right where I want is high. And, therefore, like... I rip them mm -hmm. and they come out of my hand and I'm like, yeah, like I got everything into that and it just took off. But yeah, when I go to like faster speed discs, I don't, yeah. and I don't know, especially when I go to like really faster discs, I'm worried about them. Like, turning. do you feel the same confidence as in those, like when you're lining up those shots with say a fairway driver versus another hole where you're throwing a mid range fairway driver to an extent fairway driver on a full rip. I, I worry about it turning over. Yeah. I worry about like, so maybe that's what it is, is the worry. Yeah. yeah. Mine's the worry. Yeah. And it's worry of turning it over. Yeah. Yeah. But because I've been playing with understable discs for a long time. Yeah. So that's what I was thinking. Like when I go like past flat and I rip something that's like stable, like actually stable. And I just like fully commit to putting it out on a little bit of an ante and letting it do like the big longer flex shot. Like maybe that'll be better because yeah. I'll know like the whole point of this is to get it over. Yeah. And I know that this disc is like just Nico. I know that this disc is so stable. I'm not going to have to worry about it turning over, you know? <laughs> yeah. I saw, I saw, <laughs> I saw some of his, uh, signature stuff at CJ's like, yeah, not, I did. I never saw that before. Yeah. yeah. But it was like, I don't know if he picked it up and looked at like the fortress or no, I just saw his name, the gatekeeper or whatever. I looked at him and it was just, it's almost not even the same mold. Like they just like the fortress, like the, like all white, the matte white ones or whatever. The fortress still has like some sort of shoulder on it. So if it, if, if it were that surge and yeah. that surge is normal surge. And then Nico's like, I also want to like a stupid beefy one of this too. It's like when it comes out of the mold and then you just like press it as flat as you can on like marble or whatever. Yeah. And then it's just flat from nose to nose. Yeah, just like that looks obnoxious. <laughs> really? It, yeah, I swear to God, it was the fortress and uh, the gatekeeper. I think were both like absurdly flat, if not like inverted, <laughs> versus the normal. I really like what these. They were. 
<laughs> yeah. You're going to put my name on this, right? Okay, good. Yeah. Yeah. That's funny. Exactly. Oh, I, I got worried. Uh, I used the, the Magnum to kneel on for my putt when I almost, when I tried to do that ace run, that was in the bush, and I kneeled yeah. on it, knelt on it, whatever. Yeah, whatever. And then when I stood up, it, there was like a little bit of a thing, and I was like, no, what if I messed up? Yeah. What if I messed up? It didn't. Nah. It went right back. Yeah. Two bucks. It's usually how it goes. Yeah, it's got the durability. Yeah. It's got the durability to it. <laughs> All right, man. Well, you ready? You ready to work out? Yeah, I'm ready. Ready to get jacked? Yeah, it's gonna be great. Good. <laughs> All right. See you later, this guys. This was fun. Bye. Thanks, bye. Love you, everyone.